eight-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face. Blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays. No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. What the hell is going on down there? What, this? <clears throat> Living it up, dude. Living it up. What the hell? What the hell is that? It's a fucking drinking horn, man. No, we got one of these. A Come drinking on, let's horn. Let's see that. Let's see that. Oh, good God. Look at that. Ooh. I'm, That's right. I'm ready to slay some fucking uh, orcs or some shit. <laughs> That's right, man. He's some I'm on a marathon behind you, and we'll we'll get down. That's good. Cool. Came from Grimfrost, actually. So yeah, a fucking drinking horn. As a matter of fact, it was. Yo, All righty. 
Wow. A drinking horn. Well, that's one way to jump into the show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monday Maniacs from Death Curse Society. Hmm. We got the colonel drinking out of a horn. We got the zigzag here. I'm Red Crank. Woo! Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> the Good big Lord. end of the year extravaganza. It oh, is. Yeah. It is. We're going to be going through the best of 2021, including horror movies that were uh, released in theaters, video on demand, other streaming services. Uh, TV series, conventions, fan films. I think Ziggy's even got a couple of shorts he wants to highlight later on. Yes, we'll get there. Real, you know, let's say you only had like 10, 15 minutes, you needed to work some horror in for your day. I got you covered. All right. And the, the, we may talk about more. Who knows? Who the hell knows? It's always a mystery around here. Fucking is. Uh, looks like Tyrone's in the house. He's Tyrone. Stacy Lynn's here. Are you what are you drinking out of that? <laughs> yeah. Does it come with like a cool holder and shit when you're not? Or is it yeah, just but I don't have anywhere to put it, man. It'd be like, like a like a strap to carry it with. <laughs> yeah, he needs like a leather thing with the, the salt pouch on it and everything. Oh there Jesus. He goes. All right. Stacy Lynn's here. Exactly. She says the last manic Monday of 2021. Woo! A microphone. James holder. is here. And it did, and it did come with one. It goes on your belt loop. <laughs> <laughs> James is here. Tommy clicks in the house. What's Patricia's up? Patricia's here. Kiara's here. Tanya's here. Loveface is here. Not sure what's going on there. Well, that might be a uh, spam bot. That might be a spammer. We'll I don't know. It's we'll a give him a chance. It's a sure. love face. Uh, BK is here. <laughs> He's here. When life, James says, when life gives you an alarm clock, a foghorn for Colonel. <laughs> Seth is here. Welcome, Seth. Patricia's in the house. <laughs> Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. Yes. 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 The exclusive club member shirt this year. We're all wearing it. The Chucky. Of course, the immortal made here famous. Or if you're hungover. Wait, wait. That sounded way too familiar to me. Familiar? Hungover? Oh, yes. Yeah. Probably normal speed for you, Crank. Shit. Mostly, mostly. Yes. Ah, CJ's here. CJ won our uh, autographed Danielle Harris photo a couple couple weeks ago. Would you tell her hi for me, please? I miss her. Danielle? We do. Yes. She just put that shit in your yes. spank bank, man. Yes, Danielle. I've I, never met CJ in person. So. I'd, I'd love to tell Danielle. Well, if you would have gone when you were in town, if you would have gone with me to my Saturday club, you could have. But no, you needed a nap when we got she back from the sleep, uh, convention. Man. We were burnt. It was burnt, man. It was 150 degrees in Oklahoma that weekend. Fuck, man. It was crazy. It was about that same temperature uh, Christmas Day. So I guess it was crazy here today. What the fuck? Yeah. 34. It's cold as shit. It snowed. A dusting. Yeah. Yeah, most of you should have gotten the, uh, the new member-exclusive T-shirts for the final girls and guys, of course only right now uh, tyrone says love the new shirt got it today thank you dcs for another great one. Oh, we've got we've got a few more ideas on the back burner we'll, we'll get to it just takes us a couple months at a time to to get them out so i'm excited right. for oh. one of the next Alrighty. yeah oh yeah yeah all righty fellas how was your holiday uh ziggy let's start with you uh yeah you know i mean we already we had my sister lives in Texas, and they had the the COVID visited, and so they they stayed in Texas. Uh, my mother and I made a mad scramble for all the gifts that were sent up here to Michigan for the big. They were going to come and celebrate here, and we shipped it all back. Got it there in time. It made it there a day early, at two hundred and fifty bucks for the ship. Woo! But I mean, hey, we got it done. Uh, so that's I guess cool. We're still going to do the other side of the family on Christmas Eve. Somebody got exposed on that side, so the whole fucking thing got canceled. So I just I hung out with my mom and dad, my brother, his dogs, my dog, my you know, and my son came over Christmas Day, and then that was it. So really very low key, but it was cool. 
Nice. It sounds like my Thanksgiving, man. Yeah. Yeah. Colonel, how about you? How was your uh, holiday? It, it was pretty good, man. It was pretty good. Uh, Santa brought both the girls everything they wanted. Uh, Santa brought me some shit I wanted. Got some cool shit. Wait and see if S and M pops up in here. Um, then I'll show it off. Uh -oh. What's it? A little biased, but I think I got a pretty damn good sister. So, ah uh, yes. So it's like I gotta wait till he gets in here, and I'm like, hey, hey S and M, check this out. So then you guys are gonna fucking wait. Oh no, it wasn't bad. And but get the report ready, cause damn it, Christmas came fucking a day late as well. Oh, uh, that's right. Hit the button. Uh, hold boy. on, hold on. I'm not even there. Give me a second. We can wait. It's way at the bottom this time. For this, you can wait. Yeah. All right. You ready? Death Curse Sports. Oh, yes. Santa gave me an extra present on Sunday when the Bengals destroyed the Baltimore Ravens again for first place in the division, the number three seed in the AFC. And this is a big end because I don't think they're going to pull it off. But if they win Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs, my Bengals are 2021 AFC North division champions. Woo! I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right. All right. I have no sports to report. Ziggy? Huh? Anything? Oh, the Lions, yes. Um, Did they lose? Well, they had a lot of COVID guys on the like the quarterback being the main one out, but uh, they, they actually were hanging in there with the Atlanta Falcons going on the game-winning drive only to throw an interception in the end zone with 30 seconds left, thus preserving their 2-12-1 record or whatever it is now. So, um, yeah. But the Jacksonville Jaguars lost too, so we remain – uh, second overall in the draft, which is everybody knows the Super Bowl for the Detroit Lions is the draft. That's the, the most excitement we get any year, and uh, that's it, man. That's all I got to say about that. All right. Uh, hey, Patricia man. wants to Patricia wants to know when we're going to have a DCS weather forecast <laughs> uh, along with our sports. So. Yeah. I like that well, one. Ooh, we could wait probably till, work something out. Wait she she also actually hits. Do what? So we'll wait till winter actually hits for me. And yeah, you. yeah, Frank, yeah, no doubt. Forecast. Yeah, my forecast is going to be it's seventy on Christmas Day. Fuck this. <laughs> uh, Patricia wants to know. Uh, wait, Zag has a dog. Yes. Uh, clearly, you have not seen any of my my dog stares at me posts. I've been putting <laughs> up on the page, you know, and, and my own page. But uh, yeah, I have a I have a Chihuahua, and he's he's in, insane, but he's cool. Yeah. Hey, and uh, Tony De Benedetto is here. He says, way to go, Cowboys. Yeah, you want to talk about destroying Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. It's fucking Washington. That was a ass whooping. That was an ass whooping, though. Did you guys see was, the, yeah. the, that's what we call them, the Redskins. Did you see the football team's players throwing punches on the sidelines? <laughs> oh, man. They, they were, had enough. They were pissed, man. It was 21 nil in the first quarter, though, just to, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got a new, I don't recognize this viewer anyway. Jonathan, thanks for tuning in. He says, Chucky was really good. Is that going to be in our top five TV series of 2021? I think you can safely assume it will be, but where is it going to rank? That's the question. You should never assume. Never assume. <laughs> All right. I got something to show off because uh, I didn't get it until today, and I only got the sample these for about oh 15 minutes or so today but uh hey uh, i'm gonna need a drum roll for this ziggy if you uh, would oh by all means <laughs> a drum roll fucker no no that, ne never mind never mind it's not but, in the uh, book and you know that come on i do have to go solo for this but these are just tests i wanted to test these before we made anything available and these guys don't even know what i've got here I don't know but what uh this is. i wanted to make this just to see what they look like and i needed a new pair of kicks anyway oh so, shit, uh, man oh sniggity snap baby 
Check that bad boy out. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Now, since it was just for me, I did uh, personalize the back or the uh, the inside. You egotistical but, bastard. I know. Yeah. Here, let some of the fucking air out, Frank. I no. know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to at some point. Hopefully they're comfortable. They're not bad. I mean, like I said, I only wore them for like 15 minutes, but uh, I did have to run a couple errands today, and that was that was it. But I wanted to get these so I could see where the design laid out on the shoe and like how they, you know, these are just canvas shoes, but they also offer a couple other. Uh, possibilities like high top sneakers and stuff like that but um, yeah, high top canvas high top yes canvas. are they high top canvas that's what i'm asking because i don't want to wear I, a knockoff chuck taylor it has to be high top i don't know i don't know but we will come up with some kind of kick-ass kick design oh, for you. It, look at that them. there you go crank it's a hit i need a pair says kiara patricia yeah. those shoes are sweet Seth says, hey, that's cool, man. Yeah. Thank oh, you. yes. What's this? Oh, there it is. I don't know what. About to deck us out in the DCS drip. I love it. <laughs> You're going to be head to toe in DCS. Yeah, I don't know if I can pull off leggings, though, so that would be difficult for me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Happen. Thank you. Yes, I, I'm excited about them. I, I want to wear them. I, I got a gig tomorrow night, so I'm going to plan to wear them and see if anybody says anything there so oh, the sexy and those kind of shoes i gotta throw like a dr shoals support in there or something to you know those things are too flat for me these are too uh bad but I, like i said haven't worn them for very long yet <laughs> damn hold on zeke says 15 triple e size available uh i don't know i'm not even sure how big these go but Did i'll look and i'll get back to you about that you know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't look at his shoes when we met him. You know, but damn, <laughs> right? <laughs> God damn! Fucking slip. All right, we got to do the sales pitch. I was going to say, man, everybody is waiting on the pitch. I know. Thanks for tuning in and following us on social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Of course, hit that subscription bell on YouTube. Not that bell, this bell. <laughs> Check out over at our website at deathcursesociety.com. We got uh, all the past shows on there. We've got a updated uh, horror film release schedule that's on mm. there. We've got our short film database, which we mm. added a few to today. Uh, we even updated the featured short film for Ziggy. And uh, all kinds of stuff on there. And we're getting ready to add some new stuff. I already showed these guys a little sneak preview. Stay tuned for that. Switch oh, on over to the join page where you can become a member. It's like Patreon. You can be a camp counselor, a crazy Ralph, or a final girl or guy. And then head over to the shop. And uh, if you were a final girl or guy, you could have gotten one of these bad boys for free. Like all our other final girls and guys. But, and you can't buy these in the store. They're not available for purchase. They're just for the members. A, we can't sell this with Chucky on it. But we got a bunch of stuff for sale on our shop. Go over and check that out. And then check out our podcast. Blah, 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 blah. That's enough of that, I think. If you don't listen to Death Curse Society. Ba -dum -bum. <laughs> You'll burn it out. No, you won't. Yes. Now you won't. No. Fantastic. Don't even believe it. And, uh, Nope, I don't don't want to believe it. And uh, oh, yes. also a quick shout out to our final girls and guys: Corey, Chris, Lorena, Christy, Luke, S. Michael, Patricia, Tanya, and Tyrone. Thank you guys. Hope you all got your shirts. Let me know if you didn't. And uh, then to our crazy Ralphs, Angelo, Peter, and Raymond. Thank you guys. And of course our camp counselors, Stacy Lynn. Orlando, Kiara, and Dave. I love that that list wow. keeps on growing every nope. couple of weeks or so. Orlando so finally nice. made the list. Let me give them their due. Yeah, I know. Finally. It only took, what, four weeks? 
Now, it took Orlando to one week, <laughs> assholes. It was Raymond that I kind of missed the boat on for a couple weeks. But it was only well, one week. Anyway, Orlando, right so. Yeah, so suck it. Um, all right, we got to get to... Let's get to it, man. Yeah, we got a lot. Oh, one of my one of my movie buddies is watching. I Morgan. She says, "I finally got two shirts. I'm gonna be as happy as Barb and Black Christmas." Ah. <laughs> Hopefully, you're not as drunk as Barb and Black Christmas. But well, hell, um, I did notice your. I noticed your order, Morgan. Thank you very much. I believe she got the uh, Ringer tea and a Loomis tea coming. Um, Loomis, and then. We got to start talking about our top 10 of 2021. And Seth says, I hope to see a certain movie that begins with R and ends with the Ezort on this upcoming list. I think that we, we will. That might. That it a, might. That's a solid fucking film, man. I'm not going to lie. Fuck it'll you, Seth. A, it'll be a quick debate down on the back end with the, with that and something else, I think. So, yeah. Fuck you, Seth. <laughs> God damn it. All right, so um, according to my records, I have ZigZag listed as the first to go <sighs> on uh, the top 10 wow. horror films of 2021. You ready? You ready, Ziggy? Yeah, let's, let's do this, man. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. But we've already talked about these at some point during the year. So, you know, we're going to blow through these. We've got a lot of information to spill tonight. So, yep. Uh, it's supposed to be 10, but I, I think I kind of hinted to Crank earlier. I was going to add an 11 because it's one I, I totally forgot about that I did end up enjoying. So You want to start with 11? I'm going to start with 11, baby. All right, all right. All right. That's the one. Get down there. I'm there. All right. Number 11, it was a short made into a feature, and it was cool, man. The stylist. Yes. It's like I, I probably would have got in here at some point, uh, higher up even maybe, but uh, I remembered it at last zero hour and went, oh shit. Uh, but yeah, man, a lot of my list uh, is from the Shutter exclusives, the things that happened on Shutter this year. And there's, there's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. as uh, number that 10. That was not a Shutter exclusive. That was an Arrow oh, video. That was one that we had to write. We had to, uh, I think I bought that one for like five bucks mm -hmm. it, it, on YouTube or something or something like that. It's on this yeah. machine. Uh, number 10 is a Shutter exclusive, The Queen of Black Magic. Uh, Indonesian, I believe. Number 11. Yeah, number, <laughs> number 11 for Craig. Uh, Colonel. It's got, it's got some crazy effects and some really creepy moments and some, some cheese in it too, but what doesn't at this point? But, I mean, definitely worth a watch and certainly worthy of being number 10 on this list. <laughs> okay, this might piss some people off, but uh, number 9... Evil dies tonight, man. Halloween kills at number nine. Uh, a lot of things came out in twenty one that were better than this. Sad to report. I mean, what's left to say about Halloween kills except, hey, at least it made the list. Number eight, one of the creepiest, atmospherically perfect movies for scary I've seen ever that went nowhere. Caveat. If you've wow. seen it, you know. If you haven't seen it, you probably should, just because, like I said, it is. It, they set up the most, the best jump scares ever that never happened. I, I, it's the only way I can explain <laughs> it. But uh, it is still worth a watch. I think. I think it is. Number seven, the reintroduction into the Saw world. Chris Rock Spiral. What? Yeah, man. It's. You needed to see this. If, if you're a Saw fan, by all means, you should have seen this already. You should. And uh, I don't I don't agree with most people's takes on it and Chris Rock being too serious. I thought it was fucking cool and refreshing seeing him in a serious fucking role that isn't Pookie smoking a crack pipe, okay? I like it. It, it's good. It's it's worth the watch, man. Spiral is, is definitely cool. Number six. Uh, you saw it. You loved it on Netflix this year. The Fear Street series. I couldn't settle on one that I liked the most. Probably number two. I I would if I had to pick one. But uh, I I dug it. It just shows that you can take some kids and do a serious slasher with some pretty good gore in it and deliver. And they did here with the Fear Street series at number six. 
Number four is one we've waited for for a couple of years now, and we finally got it. And uh, we pretty much love everybody involved with this one, man. Uh, from Deborah Moore, he's right on down. Vincent Desanti, 13 oh, fans. Oh, 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 well, oh. I can't see. Oh, what uh, honorable mentions. Oh, that's right. You wanted to stop. Before you, before you get the t- top five, yeah. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Yeah. There's a preview of my number five. Or. Yeah. What do you hear? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I see what I did. Yeah. Never mind. Right, okay. So. Uh, honorable mentions. Uh, I'll go through these pretty quick. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Not the best one in this series, but it was still pretty cool. Uh, I want to see more from the Warrens, of course. Uh, Jacob's Wife. Hey, man. Underrated. I mm. love the transformation. This was a, a decent, a, a sleeper. That was really good. Uh, you should definitely get out there and see that one. Uh, this one is going to piss off Crank, but I don't care. I, I was entertained. It is Slacks. That's right. Killer fucking designer jeans. I'll say no more. That's exactly what it is, and uh, it is it is fun. It's entertaining. I don't care. It is. And one more that's got to be mentioned at this year. Maybe not quite so much horror, but it still has to be mentioned. I'm doing it as an honorable mention, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Because, oh. yeah, man, it had to be put on. It, it, it's just that good a movie. Any fans of the other material is going to love this movie. That's all there is to it. So it deserves a spot on the 21 list. Did I not okay. even remember we're doing 15 films? No, no, no. I just I, I kept seeing ones I couldn't <laughs> I'm, you barely I'm got the memo that he's going to talk moving. about short films. That's true. Yes. All right. 13 Fanboy. That's where we left off. Back up there. Uh, I'm Number five. Go. Yep. And, well, I guess a five. So four, three. Well, because. No, I, I must have shorted myself one, or I didn't move the number up or something. No, you're forgetting something. What did I move? You're forgetting something. You're forgetting something. You're forgetting something. I, I hear you. I got to check the master list here real quick. So. We'll be right back right after these messages. Now, hold on. Hold on. Does that help okay. you? Hang on. Not, it's okay. a mirror image, dude. There's no way you can be missing this. Okay. What are we looking at? So I had my list up in front of my face here, but I, I changed it. There it is. Okay, thank you. Yes. That? I, I, added, I forgot to write. Okay. Because uh, I had five. that. Yeah, I had that at five. That is my number five. Candy. Okay. Man. Yes. So you got my next two here. Sorry. Oh boy. See, I, I this list went through so many adaptations the whole time that How I was stoned. Are you Ziggy? Not enough, apparently. But uh, you know, Candyman, it got a lot of hate. It did get a lot of love. I thought, I thought they delivered on something as a relaunch. It is pretty good. The balance, the social message, balanced. I again will say, don't feel like I was hammered on for being white, and that kind of thing. So I mean, uh, I liked it. A lot of other people didn't. But uh, it's still worth in 2021. Shit, man, it's definitely top five. Cracking, okay. cracking. You need to eat more fucking fish, dudes. It's good for your memory. Mo fish. <laughs> well, I- I'm not touching that. Is we that already did four, thirteen fanboys. Number four. Right. Um, number four. Jump number, number three. Uh, was another surprise. False positive. Uh, very much in the vein of Rosemary's Baby, but. Pierce Brosnan's on board as the heavy in this, uh, but it takes such a fucking crazy, ridiculous turn at the end that had me <laughs> laugh out loud. I mean, and, and I just loved it. I loved the way it finished that way. It was very, very cool. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, see it. Because uh, it, for nothing else, that fucking ending. That's your uh, number three? My wow. number three, dude. These, I'm t- I wow. the ones I enjoyed. And these things shuffled. A lot of these, I, I would say three through eight could shuffle and, and still be okay with it. Number two, another surprise that I thought I was going to hate and uh, it became Superhost. The Airbnb with the, the goofiest owner of the house and you know and an appearance from Barbara Crampton in it, of course, was great. Mm-hmm. But this chick plays crazy perfect. It's just, uh, and Wilkes, I mean, just the whole thing. She does it so good, and the fucking ending is one of the best you'll ever see in a horror movie like this. It's so satisfying. 
It just it just is. I loved it. Uh, this one was almost number one for me. It was almost fucking number one. I, I argued with it. Uh, but then I settled on something so ridiculous and so fucking cool that this this actually could have been number one on the top ten list or it could have been in the debate for the worst movie of the year. This next one. It That's has everything. It. <laughs> it has everything. It has the gore. It has an annoying little girl. It has bad jokes. It has bad acting. It has it making fun of itself on top of itself on top of itself to the point where you're like, Jesus, we get it. But it is everything that is Psycho Gorman. Number one. The gore is fantastic. What? It's so fucking good in this. And I don't know. I just I needed this. I I understand. You're either going to hate this fucking movie or you're going to be a huge fan of it. There is no in-between here, and I can't blame you, and I will not argue with you, but on my fucking list, Psycho Gorman, number one for 2020. 2021. All right. I want to jump in real quick. Come on in, two, Colonel. Two things. One, I know I rented a video on demand before it shut her last December, so I've seen this. It's, did I not tell you guys you have to watch fucking Psycho Gorman? This movie is fucking amazing. And that's the thing. Crank's pissed at you for saying that. I was all like, fuck, he was right. But I mean, I was like, wow, this is, it's really bad at points. I mean, it, 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 it could, it's an awful movie at points. It's terrible. But there's so much good that bridges the bad that I, I, I can't. I can't not give it the number one. I can't. I have later to. on. Later on, I want to talk about our, our worst movies of the year, but also our biggest disappointments of the year. Oh. This, one of mine. All right, wow. I'll say number two. That's my number eleven. Keep it up. That's my number eleven because I totally fucking forgot. And honestly, it should be higher, but I can't put it any higher right now. So fuck my whole list up. So number eleven. Psycho okay. Gorman. I forgot about it, man, because I'd seen it in twenty twenty, like not twenty twenty one. So I'm shocked at that. I'm I shocked. I had a brain fart, dude. Wow. <sighs> yeah, it was exhausting putting this list together. I'll be honest. It was, it was, I hated it. I hated doing it because I had to hack like werewolves within. I had to hack fucking a bunch of things. Ziggy, I'm not sure you deserve this, but. You deserve it. Good right. list, Ziggy. Good list. There are no wrong answers here or wrong oh, lists. Oh, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> I might beg to differ about that. Good lord. Um, uh, oh, there's a good one. CJ says, I would love if y'all would post your list in the group after the show. It will be, we will be doing some uh, some kind of graphic thing or a video thing with our top 10 um, on the Death Curse Society social media pages. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do it yet, but we are going to get, we are going to include those. So if, stay tuned for that, CJ. If we do our individual fucking list, we had to put our face in the fucking background. I was sitting there like, "We have to see this." We are reading that shit. Yeah, be awesome. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which movie he's talking about. Jonathan, help me out if you would. Jonathan says, "I agree. I love the concept of the movie, though." It has uh, to be the Psycho Gorman. I don't know because this was an early, early oh. up. So, all right. Um. James actually asked, does Slacks count as 2021? It yes, sure it does. does. It does because it got a USA distribution date in uh, 2021. So Technically, a few that. of these films might have been around since 2018, 2019, 2020, but if the official US release date was 21, then it was legal. Mm -hmm. Um. James says, I enjoyed Video Vore as far as shorts go, and I got a signed copy from the director. Nice. nice. I'll have to look that up. Yep. Uh, CJ says, Jacob's wife killed me. Yeah, I like <laughs> Jacob's wife. Uh, yeah, I don't cool. think that's on my list, but it's one of those that was close. Uh, Patricia says, hell yes, Slacks. I, I knew it. I knew she, Patricia would be on my side with that one. Okay, guys. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, Lorraine is here. Yo, and hello, dudes. Nice show. Dude. Yes, that's right. Hope you like yours. Dudes. I know Lorraine is going to be in and out tonight because uh, she's got some stuff going on, but thank you for coming in for a little bit. 
And from across the pond, we got Carrie here. Hi, y'all. Welcome back, Carrie. We hadn't seen you in a couple weeks. Uh, Stacy Lynn. Oh, man. Ziggy got too excited over this one. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, he completely fucked up his list on me. Well. Well. That's what I'll say to that. All right. Uh, CJ says that chick was insane. I think she's oh. talking about Superhost. Yeah. Yes. But she played it so well. Yeah. yeah. And, and that think, ending, man. Come on. That ending was... That was... That kicked the score up for me uh, a whole point or two. That ending. I loved it. Yeah. That's exactly how that shit would go. I think uh, Colonel's still trying to get a date with her, too. Is that, is Dude, that true? She's got a restraining order on everything. It's like she's making it difficult. All right, we got a couple of lists coming in. I'll get to those here in a second. Uh, CJ says, I had so many people watch that movie. Are you talking about Superhost, I think? Or Jacob's Wife. Or Jacob's Wife, maybe? Silent D's here. Yo, what up? Silent D, what up? And Patricia says, great list. And I loved everything about Psycho, Psycho Gorman except the ending. Yes. All right. That's fair. I like the ending because that man, I didn't have to watch any more of that piece of shit. I mean, there Jesus were, Christ. There were yeah, many was fucking amazing. Crank. Unforgivable God, moments. Movies. But man, the makeup, oh, the, the, the fucking effects and just the, the monsters, how they all looked and they're all their individual looks. Those guys are fucking good. And that's like one guy did like the directing, the editing, the makeup, all of it. So, I mean, it's that's. And he likes hunky Crazy. boys. Like, come on. It's another good old Canadian product, eh? Eh? Hey. All right. Hey, Peter Anthony's here. What's up, Peter? Woo! He's watching his dolphins, but wanted to stop in and say hello. Hello, Peter. Peter. Ah, yes. You it's may get a mention good. later on. Yes, in the Maybe. Phantom section. We'll see. Yes, Maybe. we don't know. Maybe. Did it make our top three? <laughs> hmm. We will see. Uh... And Jonathan says, oh, he was talking about Halloween Kills. Like the concept of bringing old characters back? Yes. I, and then, I do, too. I just I, felt they were mistreated. Horribly written for and mutilated in, in, with the pen. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, if you get a chance, it's a little lengthy, but go back and watch our Halloween Kills breakdown on review. You'll yeah. get the point of what we mean by but Because we deconstructed the shit out of that movie. Ken and Billy are here. Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year happy to New you, year. too. Woo. Yep. A new year. Oh, man. All right, man. Okay. Ziggy, your list and my list could almost not be more different. I completely expected that, though, to be honest. Uh, because, <laughs> like I said, Halloween Kills would go into my... Biggest disappointments of the year. Um, Slacks <laughs> would be in my worst of the year. I am kind of shocked that you included Spiral and uh, False Positive, though. Especially False Positive. Those yeah, those two really got me. That went through me for that was a curveball for me when you said that. I was like, yeah, but what? it was it was good. It was good. Um, it, but... And again, I did that that. When it twisted so silly at the end, how could you not appreciate that? I don't know. That's just me, my twisted sense of humor, I guess. But yeah, I thought that was funny, fantastic. Oh, damn, was it deserving of a top ten spot? Oh, a top yeah. three. Top three, dude. Well, I you know. Jeez. Be fair. There, there were several films I just could not get out to see. Antlers was one of them. Last night in Soho was one of them. I mean, there, there's a few. I obviously, if I had seen them, would probably be here. So. It is what it is. Of what I saw, that's what you get. Man. Man, oh man. Haters, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah. All right. Where is that other list? There it is, I think. I think I got a list from Orlando and James. So. Oh, man. We'll, we'll start with Orlando. <clears throat> he says his list is 10, the Forever Purge. Nine, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Eight, Spiral. Seven, Don't Breathe. Two, um, man, 
Six, 13 Fanboy. Five, Candyman. Four, Wrong Turn. Nice. Three, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. It two, did. Escape Escape Room Tournament of Chan... Two? Whew. And one, Halloween Kills. All right. All right. Uh, I, yeah, uh. Nobody's wrong. I'm not arguing. I, I'm not a fan of those kind of stylized, that Escape Room style, but that's, that's all right, man. Sorry. I, you know, I watched it over the weekend. It wasn't bad. Just to yeah. see if it would make my list. It, yeah. it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, man, Orlando, I thought we were I thought we were bros, man. I don't think we can ever go to a movie together unless it's going to be middle of the road. I got you, Orlando. Fuck off, Orlando. I'm playing Orlando. I'm playing. <laughs> And uh, James says his number 10, Horror in the High Desert, 9, Sun. Sun was very close to my list, but just didn't quite get it. 8, Slacks. Fuck you, James. 7, The Power. 6, Werewolves Within. 5, The Spine of Night. 4, Titan, which I really, really, really want to see. I've been seeing that mentioned a lot, yeah. and I really want to see that, but I can't. I haven't had a chance to yet. Uh, number three, Fear Street 1666. That's the final one, right? That's yes. the third part? Yeah. Okay. Number two, Superhost. All right. All right. And number one, Censor. Yes. I definitely want to see that one. I did not. And I, I tried to make it happen before this show tonight, and I could not get it done, man. I did see that one. Um, yeah, check it out when you get a chance. It's uh, It's interesting. Yeah, I had a little person, so I was <coughs> unable to watch fucking anything I wanted to watch before I had to submit my list. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. We were, we were there it's last fun. night. Dude, I know. It's fun. Daddy, 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 daddy. Hey, what, daddy. Do, what do they say when they the Vikings toast? What's that? Ruff or something. They kind of bark and got a little drinking toast they do. You got to learn I've that. Been, I've always been too drunk to fucking do it. All right. Well, when, when you drink that thing out, you have, you must learn what the... The Viking Toast is. Anybody out there know the Viking Toast? Uh, if Luke's in here, he might be able to tell he us. He might know it. Um, skull, maybe? Skull. Hmm. It is like Skull or something like that. You're right. S-K-O-L or something. All right. Carrie says about Halloween Kills, for me, they brought the characters back so they could be killed off, and it lured people into the theater and to subscribe to Peacock. Yeah, I, I guess, but... It was just such a so many wasted, wasted opportunities with those characters, and it could have humanized that. Stop it! Stop it! It could have humanized them, those characters in that film a lot more. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know. Patricia says slacks rules. Fuck you, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Or if you're hungover. For the Wino fan. Jesus Christ, how many of these do we have now? <laughs> Fuck. Apparently a quarter of a bigger dozen. Fuck, I don't know. Right, Jonathan says, that's a horror of a top ten. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Orlando says, do I get the Billy Zane Award? <laughs> no, you get a free pass. Just no, home. no. Listen, we don't give that to we don't give that to viewers. If you had resort if you were on your list, I would consider giving you the BZA. Oh, oh good god. Award. The sad award. <laughs> uh, so Orlando good. says, Ziggy, you are correct. Skull. Skull. S K A L. Skull. Yep. Viking Viking Toast Skull. Drink to good health. All right. Yeah, they, when I saw Amon Amar, they, every, after every song, he sculled the crowd and took a drink of something and stumbled off stage after an hour and a half. They put on a hell of a fucking show. Though. Oh, yeah, it was good. It was really good. Open for That'll do it. All right. I need to get into my top ten, and then we'll wrap it up with Colonels, it looks like. Let me take a nap. What's going to be now? Now, I'm not going to spend as much time on much, much of this, except for the ones that maybe we haven't talked about at all. Or very little of. Um, starting off with number 10. 
Wrong turn, man. Wrong turn surprises shit out of me because I really didn't like the, besides maybe the first one, a little bit of the second one, I didn't really like the series where they took it. And I thought this was a fresh look at a, a worn down series. What else could they do with it? So, yeah. Uh, here's one that you guys might have forgotten. Uh, number nine, Benny Loves You. Holy shit, this movie was entertaining as fuck. Is that this year? I guess it was this yes, year. Yes, it was. I double-checked it. Well, it was in the U.S. It was this year. But I think England, it was like 2019 or something. But goddamn, this movie was fun. Um, <laughs> I still want one of those fucking dolls. I'm going to get one at some point. I just don't know when. You had your uh, chance. I think it's past. No. Are they? All right. Well, fuck. You, you, might, be, you might pay you one on now. eBay or something. Yeah. No, no, no! I'm not gonna do that. I, I just they were sixty or something, I think. So, oh, I thought they were only like forty-five or something. I don't know. I remember looking hey. at it and going, "Yeah, is, it this just gonna be, is it going to be something, or is this just going to be a movie and that's it and that's it?" You know, <laughs> it just it was it was a fun movie, man. I really yeah. enjoyed the fuck out of it. Number eight for me was a Shutter exclusive that. uh I think has slipped through maybe most of your list. I think somebody mentioned it um, just a moment ago, though. The Power. This was one of the few from the Shutter releases that I really got, kind of got into, and it was just that right tone for me—a little dark, a little a little slow burn, um, but it a had lot. a good story to it. A lot, yeah. Shut up. Well, um, that's the thing, though. Remember, that was the same kind of thing. It, like, like, like caveat. It set up. These long fucking tracking walks down these barely lit hallways, and there's generators and flashing like warning lights and shit that just mm -hmm. it's off putting, absolutely. But no payoffs, man. So, so, so you're telling me it only came in at Nate? It's only at Nate right now. <laughs> That's a little throwback joke. If people don't know that one. That movie did not make my list. Spoiler alert. The, the, meat, the meat meter. <laughs> That's right. Uh, number seven for me. Probably the only like big major release that's on my list. Maybe. Uh, but Candyman was probably the best major release that I saw this year. And I had my issues with it. Unlike Ziggy, I did think it was a little preachy, but... I also predicted that it, I thought it was going to be a little preachy. So, but it's still worthy of number seven on my list. Number six, uh, one that I don't think these guys have seen. Actually, I think uh, Ziggy just said he hadn't, but I was able to catch uh, last month, I believe. Antlers. We've been waiting for this movie to come out since 2019. It finally fucking did. And I thought it was pretty great. Again, a little bit of a slow burn, but acted well. The kid that's in this, holy shit, I hope he keeps acting, because that kid's gonna be around for a long fucking time if he does. Mm. Um, yeah. Good story. A, a little bit of a different story. Not completely ripped off from everybody else. So, January I appreciate 4th. that. It was in theaters for like two fucking days here. and It's, it's uh, on demand. Yeah, it's got pulled out fucking quick. Yeah, 4th of yeah. January. Uh, let me get to my honorable mentions. Uh, one's already been mentioned, 13 Fanboy. Got to throw a little love to Deborah and her crew for a, uh, a great film there. Um, another Shutter exclusive that I really liked early in the year. I think this one came out in February. And uh, we really did a pretty in-depth review of this one. And it still kind of resonated with me when I was putting my list together for the end of the year. And that's A Nightmare Wakes. Um, just a different kind of film. And I appreciated it for the, the way it was delivered, I guess, for lack of a better word. And my third honorable mention, um, again, almost, almost as fun as Benny Loves You, but not quite. Or it wouldn't. It would be more than an honorable mention. Werewolves Within. Again, another fun fucking movie that hit almost all the right notes when it came to the satire and the and the comedy, which 
is rare for me, uh, especially horror comedies. Horror comedies either are way too subtle or way too over the top when it comes to their comedy. This one, like right in that sweet spot that I like, and I, I dug it a lot. And the AT&T girls in it. So. <laughs> no, no, don't start that shit. Start what? No, no. So it's more. Uh. Like <laughs> so. No motorboating. No motorboating. Sorry. All right. All right. Top five. Number five for me. Uh, let me look here. Yep. I think the only Netflix movie that made my list, but uh, I enjoyed the hell out of this. It made me think. It made me want to like learn a little bit more about the film and about the way it was made. That's things heard and seen. I know a lot of people hated this movie. I get it. They especially hated the ending. Well, what does the ending mean? Well, we went through in our review and we told you what the ending means. And it didn't. It still didn't sell these two guys, but it sold me. And uh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Number four for me, Ziggy mentioned it earlier as a last minute addition to his list, but this was always in my top five, I think. The Stylist. I dug the shit out of this. And the this cast of almost all women and this crew, mostly women, pull off one of the creepiest fucking movies of the year. And I'm not saying that's something to be shocked by. I'm just like, kudos to you. And I hope more people pay attention to that because it's a fascinating film. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, find it. Um, I'm actually probably going to buy that on Blu-ray soon um, before they run out of them. But I dug it a lot. Number three for me, one that we have not hardly talked about at all. And I wasn't going to include this on my list because it came out in 2019 overseas. But it did debut, or it was made available in America in 2021. So, and I've seen it on some other top list. I love religious shit. It's St. Maud. Holy shit. Now... This is probably the slowest burn of all slow burn fucking movies. So, if you do like slow burn movies, or if you don't, I should say, don't watch this. I get it. You won't get it. I saw somebody uh, commenting about it on a Facebook post just a, like right before we went on the air that was just like, oh, I got 20 minutes into it and I turned it off. I can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, it's the last 20 minutes you got to watch to really get into. But I dug the shit out of this movie. I like that religious horror aspect in some movies, most movies. Um, and I like the slow burns and that was, and the acting in this is just fucking phenomenal. Number two for me is, uh, another one we were going to talk about, but we ended up not for some reason. I think just circumstances changed for the show a little bit. Uh, but it's The Night House. I thought this was another one of those. So well done. So creepy. So effective in its cinematography and its and the design of everything. That it was just good. The story was great. The acting. Uh, Rebecca Hall, I think is her name. God damn. She was great in this. Because uh, she could go from scared out of her mind to talking to a student's parent, because she was a teacher, talking to a student's parent about, like, uh, look, my husband just died, so go fuck yourself. And like that. And it was just her her demeanor in the whole thing was great. Um, one more honorable mention, and if I was ranking this movie as my in my list, it would go in this spot somewhere between one and two or probably number two. Um, but like Ziggy said, you got to mention Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's probably one of the better or best movies of the year, in my opinion. But does it belong in the top ten of a horror rankings list? I don't think it does. And I think a majority of you out there agree. So, nope. Uh, but it does deserve an honorable mention. And my number one is 
God damn, guys. Uh, I saw this three times in like a week because it was just so beautiful, so well done. I don't know this director all that well, but I want to start looking up some more of his stuff. Uh, it's Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. There's so there, I can't think of anything bad about this movie, except for some of you, you two, especially Ziggy and Colonel. Um, it's a little bit slow. Other than that, holy shit. And there is one sound thing that they do in this film where it just pulls you so deep into this world. And if you're not paying attention, you barely notice it. But when it happened in the theater, I was just like, that's fucking genius. Why didn't any, why has no one ever done that before? So, um, great story, great acting. I think Anya Taylor joy is one of the best young new actresses out there. I know she's been around like 10 years now, but Jesus Christ, I have yet to see her do a terrible performance, except maybe that new mutants. That was about as bad as I've seen her get. And that was still pretty fucking good. So last night in Soho, my number one. Yeah, bad Thanks. script isn't their fault ever. You know that. No. All right, Crank. The sleeping to... pill of the DCS, Red Crank, giving you them slow burn <clears throat> when the insomnia has got a hold of you. I'm the fuck. What? <laughs> I'm the fucking sleeping. Fuck you. <laughs> I think you mean uh where is it fuck you yeah. that works too yeah <laughs> no that's cool i mean you're right you know and i i really i want to see the last night in soho but i wasn't gonna pay 20 bucks to do it well and and that's one of the things that you know i i know i said earlier you know yours and my list are completely different this time yeah. around but that's because you haven't seen Last Night in Soho, right. The Night House, St. Maud, uh, Antlers, you know, and you hated, was, you hated A Nightmare Wakes and, or no, you didn't hate A Nightmare Wakes, but it definitely wasn't. And, but you didn't like that really as well and things heard and seen very much, so. We didn't mention the uh, Irish vampire movie. Boys from County Hell. Yeah, and we didn't, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of them that, you know, but Dude, I mean, there are a bunch was, that were right was, there. There were so many movies compared to last year at this time that we right. actually got yeah. in 20. I mean, I mean, the whole fucking levy broke and we got everything yeah. they've been holding on to. So there was a lot to see. I was all like, well, fuck, I, I've got 16 here that, you know, and I can't fit them all in. So what do we do here? You know, so it's right. cutting and. That's a long He's right. list, man. I made a master list, and yeah. I was like, "Holy shit!" There's a lot of shit. Really that many. I mean, there's. We watched a shit ton this year. Fuck, there's ten movies I kept off my list. I would have gladly fucking put on one. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, we. I think we could have done. It would have been a long fucking ass show, or it would have just had to have been uh, <laughs> just, just movie. We could have done like a top twenty, top twenty-five. A lot I, of fucking material this year. Maybe we'll do that next year, huh, Colonel? Huh? Yeah. Huh? huh? What's that? Like, a, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. Special six p.m. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> That's still a good uh, list, man. I'm just, you know, I kid, but I mean, um, I know, I know. I, and well, I can't wait to see Colonel's list because it sounds like his is going to be pretty different too. His is a little different too. It looks like. Um, definitely, definitely check out last night in Soho. I think you will appreciate it at, at at the very least. So, when it comes down in price, I know you cheap bastard. Yep. Not 20 bucks, but... I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> it's cheaper than going, going to the movies and getting the fucking pop and popcorn along with your ticket, man. It's 20 bucks. You ain't lying, dude. I went and saw Spider-Man in the Emacs and with the popcorn oh, and pop. I was in 50 bucks for two people. Yep. And I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Well, last night in Soho is one of those that I will buy as soon as it's out on Blu-ray. Like I will, that will probably be one of those I go to the store on a Tuesday night or, or a Tuesday morning and get. Just I dug that movie so fucking much. Carrie says the only person who can get the Billy Zane Award is the twat himself. <laughs> that could be true. 
That's true. James says, Benny, love you. Benny loves you didn't quite make my list. Understandable. I enjoy the hell out of it, though, man. Uh, Black Friday and Chompy and the girls were fun. I have to. Oh, I haven't seen Black Friday yet. That's the uh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell movie, isn't it? Yeah, I missed that one, too. Well, he's in it for a little bit, I guess. Hmm. Uh, James says no one gets out alive and was okay, uh, and a classic horror story was decent. Yeah, yeah. I dug both of those too, but they just didn't they didn't get my attention enough to get into the top ten. Don't go in the fucking attic. No, I, I, it's just Don't. short, just short. You know, they were good, they were okay, but just I get it. You know, they just were just a little well, short of making it. There were a lot like that, like a Quiet Place Two. Um, the Fear Street tril trilogy is probably on a ton. Of top ten list this year, yeah. it, it was close but not quite. Um, I don't want to mention a couple of these just in case Colonel has them on his list. But um, Superhost was close to being on my list. Jacob's wife, caveat, uh, yeah. But I, there were so many that were that would be in a top twenty-five that just didn't make it into a top ten or fourteen, whatever. <laughs> um. Trisha, great list. Crank, Carrie, totally agree with you. Thank you. Uh, James says Ziggy with that Led Zeppelin reference. Top forty. Oh, <laughs> I'm not even a Zeppelin uh, fan. That's what's funny. You know? <laughs> Orlando says a big body count is what I enjoy from a horror movie. Yeah, and if that's what you're looking for, Halloween Kills was your shit. I get that. That's your jam. I get it. Uh, I look <laughs> for. Story and the look of the film. That's what, I, and it doesn't matter what kind of movie it is, horror movie or what. That's what I look for in a movie. I don't know. I I, just, I was overwhelmed with nostalgia watching Psycho Gorman. Just like, to, it, it takes place in the '90s, first of all. I mean, it's shot now, but I mean, uh, but I don't know if you anybody remembers like the Giver or those Dynaman things on Night Flight on USA back in the day. Night Flight. And yeah. all that shit when these monsters start showing up and some of them have really ridiculous costumes that are it looks straight out of a Johnny Sacco or an Ultraman episode, man. I don't know. I, I just I fell in love with it. I'm probably nice. insane. I don't know. No, you're not. <laughs> Dude, it, it, even the generation group Power Rangers. They remind me yeah. of the Power Rangers with all the different it's, shady little monsters and shit. It's Power Rangers with beheadings. It's fucking yeah. sweet. <laughs> all right. Let me throw these last couple of uh Top 10 list here from Patricia. She says, uh, number 10, The Feast. That was another one that was close to getting on my list. That one's malignant. fucking twisted. Holy shit. Uh, number nine, Malignant. Number eight, Werewolves Within. Number seven, False Positive. Number six, Censor. Number five, Candyman. Number four, Willie's Wonderland. Uh, number three, Slacks. Fuck you, Patricia. Number two, Fair Street Trilogy. And number one, Benny loves you. Yeah, see, there yeah. you go. That's a that's a great top nine list right there. Get what I, I would say there. that Get list is pretty Get good. I... Get what I did there? S. Michael says, honestly, kind of a weak year. I I I kind of disagree with that in a way. I think it was a pretty strong year because there were months that we were getting five and six releases. Now, some of them weren't great, but there was always one that was pretty decent in there. You know, trust me. I, we know because we were the ones that watched four of those five or six releases almost every month, at least. For a while, at, you know, for the first nine, eight months of the year or so. Um. His number 10, Halloween Kills. All right. Uh, number nine, The Darkness of the Road. I don't even know about that one. Number eight, Candyman. Number seven, 13, Fanboy. Number six, The Reckoning. Number five, The Conjuring. Devil Made Me Do It. Number four, The Accursed. Number three, It's Me, Billy. Okay. That's a discussion for another day. Number two, old. Wow. Okay. Mm. Honorable mentions, Army of the Dead and False Positive. And number one, Sator. Okay. Uh, there's a few in there I haven't seen yet. Sator Army is the one dead. that I, 
I do want to see. Uh, I I disliked Army of the Dead so much. Well, I I, I considered it, you know, then I, I went back and I was like, wow, that's right. That was that fucking long ass fucking movie yeah. that didn't really Zombie play as well as it could have. Tigers. Done. Zombie Tigers. That's all you got to know. Uh, that's Michael. Good look. Uh, Dave says, I have not watched that much this year in the horror field, but I am after some of these lists. Good. And, but Halloween Kills is one I did, and man, shaking my head. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. Pat- Patricia says, I wish Guara was in Psycho Gorman. That might have oh, made it man. a little better. That's a future sequel right there, man. Pitch that. Fuck. Right. And Carrie Yates says, my kid, or my list, anything, kids TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's surrounded by chitlins. All right. Colonel, are you ready? My time? It's oh, my time your, to shine. Shit. It's your time. Let me pull Tonight up. is your Let night, bro. Let me pick this list up real quick. <sighs> All right. <laughs> so, spoiler alert. I'll let you guys know. Halloween Kills did not make my fucking list. Ooh. Not at all. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, proceed. Okay. And I'll be honest, <laughs> you know what? There's probably films more deserving of being in my top ten. But ultimately, it kind of came down to what stuck out. Let's be honest. There's some of these movies on my list are like, oh, all right, we did watch that. Because I couldn't fucking remember it. There were some forgettable movies. So coming in at number 10, I love this fucking movie. Is it bad? <laughs> yes. Is acting terrible? Yeah. The effects mm. great? Not really. Is it funny? <laughs> fuck yeah. Witness infection. <laughs> Three of zombies. I don't give a fuck, man. This movie was great to me. I fucking loved it. Oh, fucking how did I forget great. that one? Yeah, how did you it forget was, that one? It was how on did... my close... How the fuck did I forget that one? Yeah, I know, man. You're fucking slacking, dude. Damn. Coming in at number nine, I wouldn't even put the series on there because to me, there's only one film that was worth watching, Fear Street Part 1. But it was really good. It was really good. Hmm. Uh, especially the fucking meat slicer, you know? That alone gives <laughs> enough to give it a number nine spot and leave Halloween Kills off the fucking list. Yeah, no shit. Coming in at number eight, this movie's so bad, it's good. Slacks. Fuck you, Thank Colonel. You. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, it was an entertaining, shitty fucking movie, okay? It's very entertaining. Very entertaining. There's only one scene where I was like, okay, this is a bit much. <laughs> that was like the beginning to the end for me. Yeah, whatever. That's because you suck. I'm sorry I didn't learn this. <laughs> uh, coming in at number seven. The hype was real for this one. I had to make my list. Didn't think it was good enough to crack out of the bottom five. 13 fanboy. I said Deborah did a great job. It was an entertaining movie. Ron Sloan, my man, fucking killed it. Like I can't I still can't give her how well Ron was in this movie. But I can't justifiably put it in my top five. So there it is at number seven. Number six. It's been mentioned before. A little surprise. Zag didn't have it on his list. I'm glad Crank had it on his because I thought this was another hilarious fucking movie. Benny loves you. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, come on. I mean, I was thrilled. More like, oh, that had to be, you know, green screen CGI shit for Benny running. And we found out the dude's like, no, it wasn't. Nope. No. We, we, we took painstaking that. work to make it look like we did that. I was like, oh, okay. The director actually reached out to us. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that, that was, was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Great fucking movie. So funny. So funny. I honorable mentions. Coming with honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one. I want to switch it up a little on a little crank. But not much. Okay. I have a picture for both. Godzilla versus Kong. Entertaining fucking movie. Has monsters. Not horror. Too, too many people. Just give me more Kong. Give me more Zilla. That's all I fucking need. I don't need that side story bullshit. I was going to see these motherfuckers fight and fight Mechagodzilla, which I was a little disappointed in Mechagodzilla's design. 
No, I had put King on the Mon- King of the Monsters on the list a couple of years ago. So I mean, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and uh, my next one we mentioned, I only have two. Honestly, this I haven't seen Spider Man yet, so this may change. But as of right now, this is the best movie I've seen all fucking year. Ghostbusters Afterlife, by far the best movie I've seen all year. Made me laugh, made me cry, made me sad, made me happy. It did everything a really good movie is supposed to do. Justifiably, I can't put it number one on a horror list. Mm. As nope. much as I love to, like I said, Michael loves this movie. We uh, talked about this like a lot. We did. Yeah. It just, just couldn't do it. All right, here's some heavy hitters. Not really, because a lot of this is independent shit. Okay, <laughs> my top five is full of fucking independence practically. Coming at number five, man, the more I thought about it, the more I really enjoyed this film. The stylist, a little surprised they even made it that high on my list, but man, it was so fucking memorable. Yeah, and it's so well acted. It, 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 it's, it, it had to be there. I was like, I, I'm sorry, you're going you to slide into number five because I really enjoyed my next four mm. just a little bit more, but. This is a good movie. I'm with Crank. I'm going to have to buy this one. Yeah. Uh, Number four. Surprise is not on Crank's list because it is a slow burn. When I said said just a minute ago, uh, I don't want to name any of these other ones because I think they might be on Colonel's list. This was one of them. All right. After Midnight. Oh, my God. If the monster didn't look so bad. (laughs) Three or two. It's just such a damn good movie. So well acted. And I know me and Crank fucking jerked off when we talked about this scene. But it's a solid 10 or 15 minute scene where he's talking to his girlfriend left. She came back and it's just a slow fucking zoom. Such a beautiful shot. Like so fucking beautiful. It, uh, this is another movie. I got to see if you can buy it because, man, I know it's not going to be on Shutter forever. And nah. this is one I am going to want to watch multiple yeah. times. And that's another one where the director watched our review. I mean, this this movie's been out for a couple of years doing the festival yeah. circuit. And it just got released this year. And he watched our review and reached out and was just like, man, thank you guys. That was that was cool. You know, even though you didn't like it all or, you know, one of you didn't like it as much I, as the other, you know, other, I, other one or whatever. I think I shit on it pretty good. Yeah, I think Especially he did. the creature. Yeah. But he was just like, I appreciate the three of you with the differing perspectives. And, and the director of uh, A Nightmare Wakes did the same thing. She was like, interesting to see a, a male perspective actually get what we were trying to do with this movie. You know? So, thank you, directors that actually watch our fucking reviews. Thank you. They are exactly. watching. Because it's like, <laughs> why the fuck are you watching this? Just like the 18 people watching now. So, coming in at number three, that's way better than an honorable mention. I'm sorry. Jacob's Wife. Probably one of the best vampire films in the last decade. Ooh. I can say that. I really that's strong. Jacob's Wife. It was a strong movie. Barbara fucking Crampton, hello. Yeah, she's good. Happy, oh, happy birthday to Barbara Crampton, yeah, by the happy way. Happy birthday, Barbara. That's right. She's still got it. Acting chops. She's still looking good. Sorry, I'm a perv like that. I mean, she is one of my favorite screen queens from the 80s. And well, the, I, I, I just loved how they made her look rough at the beginning. And then once she started turning, she got hot. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh. And, and just the right. sudden change in character. I mean, they didn't even make it fucking subtle. It was just poof. Oh, yeah. It was, like, even just her dress, the wardrobe she wore. I was like, holy shit. Well, hello. It, it was a good movie. I can see why you guys would put it on your honorable mentions, but this one really stuck out for me throughout the whole year. So. And coming in at number two, easily could have been my number one. But there's reasons why it came a little short. <laughs> I did not think I would like it this much. Superhost. Okay, I know what you guys are thinking. Come on, Colonel. There's only one reason why this is number one on your list. You're not totally wrong. I'm sorry. This chick is fucking sexy, especially when she's acting all crazy. I don't know what that says about me, but God damn, I fell in love. Like, I'm going to marry her one of these days. I'm not, because I remember her from World War Z now that I look into it. <laughs> but the character was just, damn, she played crazy. She played crazy well. It was the fucking eyes. I think I was really attracted to the eyes. Like, she pulled that crazy look off. 
Wow. But not only that, it was a good fucking movie. I like the yes. twist at the end. Great ending. Great ending. I, I love those endings in fucking horror movies. That was fantastic. And they made you not like the main characters enough to be. I cheered when they fucking died. Like I, especially <laughs> the chick. She got what she fucking deserved. Oh God. Yep. So if you have Shutter and you haven't watched Superhost yet, what the fuck are you waiting for? You gotta watch it. It's about. It's actually. It's funny too because it's about. Uh, you know, YouTube influencers that stay in an Airbnb, which is something we do on a semi-regular basis. Yes. yes. It, it's what hit close to home, but we right. haven't run into the psycho owners yet. Not yet. yet. And if we run into a psycho owner like that one, I'm told, she better fucking watch out. She ain't the <laughs> only one. <laughs> if we oh, run into I'll her, this will be Colonel. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Yes, I'll step out of the way and like yep. I'll yeah. fuck. I'll go get a hotel room. Yeah, it's like yep. saying, look, for whatever reason, I am attracted to fucking crazy. But that's enough. <laughs> I digress. Let's move on to my number one. I was a little surprised it was my number one, but some of the shots are just fucking beautiful. I love the mirror effect. The cinematography was fucking great. Candyman. The gore was good when you had it. I didn't mind the story. I didn't mind the preachiness because I knew that's what I was going to get going into it, but I didn't think it was that bad. Um, the end was a little, eh, until I heard Tony Todd. I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. That, yeah. that gave me fucking chills, man. It, it did. It gave me fucking chills in the theater. It, it, like I said, not everybody's cup of tea. I get that. But it was just so well shot. Could have been a little better acted. Could have been a little better written, even. It's just out of the, you know, the major releases this year. Hands down, Candyman is the fucking best. And there you have it. You have Colonel's Top 10 2021. Nice wow. list. Very nice different. List. All the way around. All the way around, they were different. Yeah. That, that's what's good. Uh, there is one grouping that we do that is very similar, <laughs> but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, let me hit a couple of these comments, and then we're just going to move on, I think. so. Moving on. S. Michael says, weak year for me may have been strong overall, given all the overall number of possible top 25 fare. I got you. Most of mine were pretty interchangeable. Yeah, I, I, I think I could. Yeah, I could do the same. Three to ten could shuffle, and it would be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dave says, oh, yeah, I did watch a Freddy's Nightmares episode. Just can't remember the exact one. Thanks, Wouldn't Dave. Wouldn't have to be season two, episode 11, would it? Because we have a review. We have a review, brother. We could compare notes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Patricia says, Ghostbusters Afterlife was my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's close, close to well, mine, but yeah, I don't know, man. Spider Man's right there, too. I did see that, and it's pretty, pretty fucking strong. Yeah, James says you gotta let Superhost inject itself into your bloodstream. You do, and Carrie oh. says, loving the list so far. Excellent. Well, Thank we got more list for you, more list. And if you got, if you guys have a list to send us, let us know, and we'll uh, get those in. Uh, S. Michael, final uh, last one says, "Great list, gentlemen. Variety is the spice of life." Hey, yeah, all right. Hey, okay. so speaking of which, well, now, really quick, hey, S. Mike, hmm? I got a couple things to show you. Oh yeah, one. Let me let me isolate him here. Let me make sure I get everything. Oh, this motherfucker's <laughs> this motherfucker is heavy. Oh yeah, you're not the only one, son. Oh baby. Actually, Colonel, I was rooting for you to. Uh, Best sister ever, I go like, and then bam, extra when, Yes, when you had your conversation with S. Michael on the actual game on his post for the same game, you're like, "Oh fuck yeah, I'm, I'm gonna buy this, man." I was like, "Going, yep, please do," because I already knew your sister had picked it up, <laughs> and I was like, "Cool, so he'll have two. I'll buy one off a of Colonel, and I'm covered then." So. But yeah, oh, that, that's a must-have. I think. I think that's that's got to be acquired by all yeah. horror board gamers, especially. Some of the collections we are, have going now. Fuck. All right. Well, Jonathan was asking about, uh, or he mentioned that he thought Chucky was pretty great this year. Yeah. So let's get into our top five TV shows of 2021. 
Uh, I get to start this one, actually. And I'm going to start it with one that I actually just started watching. I'm not quite all the way through it yet, but I'm more than halfway. Um, well, because the director's hmm. initials are MF? No. Oh. <laughs> no. But hold on. You'll know when that's coming. <laughs> um. But no, it was one that we knew had been coming for a while. We were a little bit scared of it, but I did start watching it recently. It's Day of the Dead. It's not that bad. Uh, again, when you're trying to do humor and horror, like a lot of humor and horror, there's a sweet spot you got to hit for me. This, one's, this one is there right now. I hope they don't stray one way or the other in the last few episodes, but I'm digging the shit out of it so far. Uh, that's number five, Day of the Dead. Number four, moved from CBS to Paramount Plus this year, I believe, and uh, was able to say fuck. And not that that made the show any better, but it was still a pretty good season. Fuck Evil. makes everything better, man. Come on. Fuck makes everything better. Fuck yeah, it does. Evil. I'm, again, still digging the shit out of this. Not quite as good as season one. But pretty fucking good. Uh, looking forward to season three. I've already seen some behind the scenes photos that they're doing. They're already in production, so that's a good thing. Uh, number three for me. Uh, still one of the funniest fucking shows on TV. What we do in the shadows. Holy shit. Um, if you are a horror comedy fan at all, this is an absolute must see. Um, yeah. I. Mm, so funny. These guys, and I hope they keep this cast together because this cast is so, so fucking good. Uh, number two, Colonel, you're going to be shocked. What? But MF did not make my number one. What? Just a I second. I know. Say it isn't so. Yeah. I know, I know. Uh, as these guys like to point out, I am on Mike Flanagan's dick a little bit too much. But here's the thing, man. This guy makes perfect fucking TV shows, perfect fucking movies. He's made one of the few movies that I've given a fucking 10 to on this show. And that's saying something. Um, but Midnight Mass comes in at number two this year. And the reason being, it's... I know I just mentioned I love the religious shit. It's a little bit too heavy on the religious shit. There's a little bit too much for it. Um, it is very wordy, as a lot of people have complained about. And I can see why that would turn off a lot of horror fans. But if you watch this, it's only eight fucking episodes. It It is worth the payoff. I know Patricia's been dogging me about not seeing this up until lately, but... And I knew I wanted to. I just wanted to be able to sit down and watch it in like one or two days. I didn't want to watch one or two episodes a week for a month. I wanted to take it all in in a very short amount of time. And I finally found that time and was able to do it. And it's excellent. Again, there's he doesn't do much wrong, but a little bit too preachy for me. That's the only thing I will say. What? It sounds like somebody's fucking typing a typewriter or something, man. I don't know what's going on. Is that what you're reacting uh, to, Colonel? Yeah, it's like, click, 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 click. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, it's his chair. It's his chair. You made me move my microphone today. I know. I know. But We had to do okay. a test. At least we now we know what the fuck it is, man. I mean, fuck. I was saying, what the fuck? That's why I had to put my hands up and go, it ain't me, dude. <laughs> I can do that all night long. But number one TV series, and I'm not sure about these guys. Fucking Chucky, man. Uh, I had low expectations for this. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did. But fucking A, it came out of the loop and just proved me wrong. And kudos to fucking Chucky for at least my number one. Top TV show of 2021. It was cranking. Yeah, man. All right. 
Shocked that there was no Flanagan on there. Shocked. Shocked. No, he was number. He was number two. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, there you go. He was number two. Um, I guess he pulled that Flanagan dick. I was asked just enough. Mm -hmm. Give number two. <laughs> he went ass to mouth on his own. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, guys, guys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have seen what I was wanting to make, but I didn't have time to today because the little one kept me up all night going, "Daddy, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy." It would have been fucking hilarious. I'll just have to save it for the next Mike Flanagan project. It's going to be stored up here. Did you do right. what we talked about? No. Didn't have time, man. She's oh, okay. fucking stuck me like Velcro. Oh, you, got, you, you guys have been talking about this for a while, it sounds oh, like. Oh, we knew. Just something came up. It just it, uh, it sounded funny. I want to see it. So, yeah. We'll see it eventually. <laughs> All right, I can help you with that, uh, probably. Too. <laughs> I think the audience would appreciate that as well. <laughs> All right. Carrie says, hopefully Scream is good next month. We're going to talk about Scream a little bit next week because next week we're going to be covering the most anticipated films of the year in 2022. And we're also going to be talking about some TV shows and other stuff like that, but mostly films. Um, and I'm sure Scream will probably kick off that discussion uh, next week because it is one of the first horror movies to come out next year. Scream has a multi-generational audience, too. It kind of crosses over from 90s to now. And everyone really likes those movies. So I, I, I don't think we can ignore that. We have to give it the old DCS coverage big time. Yeah. Do we have to? Uh, yeah, we have to. Dave says, fuck totally makes everything better. I have a shirt and a hat that just says fuck. And they get tons of compliments as well as the opposite, too. That's, yeah, there you go. Uh, when Ozfest used to tour the nation, I picked up a shirt at one of the vendors, and it simply says in white block letters, "Fuck you, you fucking fuck." And it's, I've had people offer me cash for it. You know, like I'll give you fifty bucks for that right now. Yeah, it's, Seriously, never, Why never. Do you not that. have a DCS shirt that says that? Though? A DCS yeah, no shirt. Shit. Yeah. Next. All right. Um, when the when the Nixons were touring in the nineties, um, I used to go to a lot of their shows and they had a shirt that said the Nixons on the front, but on the back it had like big, huge block letters, like ignorant fuck. Uh, because that was a line in one of their songs. And, uh, yeah, I used to try to wear that all the time, but I'd always have to wear it with like a flannel or something just in case I had to cover it up a little bit. But, yeah. Well, when you when you work at a, a trendy shoe store in the mall in the nineties, that's that's yeah, you that's... gotta cover that shit up. Uh, James wants to know if Colonel is reenacting naked lunch. Dude, I don't know. I mean, yeah, do I eat my lunch naked? Fucking, of course I do. I don't want to get buffalo sauce all over my shirt. Get caught in my chest hair. I say that shit for later. It's big up. I'm gonna go go, but no. <laughs> Don't hate, appreciate. You know how much money I got? Only fans doing that shit, like twelve dollars a month, son. And uh, oh, yeah. and Carrie, Carrie, one more comment, and then I'm going to save the uh, top five list for next here or after Colonel's list. Uh, but Carrie says going to be binge watching Cobra Kai in preparation for New Year's Eve. Sorry, not horror related. No, but oh, yeah. Kidding? I am fucking stoked for that. I have I, uh, one of the few, I, I, as you know, I'm a huge mark for these 40, 30, 40 year later stories continuing. So, yes, this fucking qualifies. Cobra Kai is good TV. They're due to jump the shark. Hopefully, it's not this season. Right. All right, Colonel, you ready to get into your top five TV shows of 2021? I guess, I guess, I guess. Because you guys, I mean, I don't really get a chance to watch a whole lot of fucking TV. I'll be honest. I literally get one or two hours to myself at night before I have to go to bed for work. The TV series, it, it, it's just not really something I get a chance to watch during the week. Uh, but I think I have some good ones on here. Some repeats from previous years, that's because they're so damn good. One probably doesn't even qualify, but deserves the love from the show, because I'm the only one to give it love. Coming at number five, though, it's a new series on Shudder called Behind the Monsters. Uh, you know, highlights, you know, 
you know, the Halloween films, Friday the 13th films, Candyman, shit like that. Does it give you new information? No, not for us. But for majority of horror fans, yeah. And that's good. I mean, I like documentaries and shit like that. I'm a mm-hmm. fucking nerd for it. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. You might learn something new. Like I said, I didn't, but it's entertaining. And honestly, you watch them enough, it's great fucking natural melatonin. It will put your ass to sleep because you're not learning anything new. Coming in at number four, something I really didn't even get to enjoy this year. Maybe the first episode because I had to work every fucking Saturday. I couldn't mm-hmm. step two in the morning watching fucking movies and getting more behind the scenes information. The last drive man of Joe Bob Briggs will forever be on my list every fucking year until they're done. Sorry, ah. folks. It's going to be there. Hey, at least I didn't put Smingoli on it this year like I did last year because I just didn't have well, to top five. Yeah. Last year was pretty slim in the TV department, though. Yeah. Coming at number three. It depends on what season you want to count. I was going to say both. Creep Show. Mm. Why is it number three, you ask? Because I seen fucking Ted Randy show up on the fake ass show trying to hawk the fucking Necronomicon and see how much it was worth. And fucking Bob Ross killing shit with fucking Civil War coins, okay? That's all you need. That's the only episode you fucking need. That very first one. You're done. What, what do you got to say there, Zach? I see you. I just, you know. The third season is so is, was a disappointment compared to the first two. Definitely, I haven't finished oh, the third yeah. season yet. I'm trying. I'm forcing my way through it, but we'll get there. Uh, number two, damn! I really thought this was gonna be number one going into this year. Like nothing's going to fucking top it. What we do in the shadows? Oh boy, they leave you with a fucking cliffhanger. It's like mm-hmm. damn, I wait a full fucking year. Mm-hmm. Find out what the hell is going on. I'll be honest, this season they took a little bit of a step back. You can tell you know, the writing team changed a little. But it's still funny as shit. It's still funny as shit. I mean, it was, I enjoyed every episode. I haven't not liked an episode of What We Do in the Shadows yet. Yeah. And coming in at number one, I must crank on this one. I had very low hopes for this fucking show. I thought it was going to fucking suck like the last 13 fucking movies they brought out. But Chucky. Was I surprisingly wrong? Like th- th- I was like, whoa. I think everybody says it. There's a lot of people. With it. This is a popular fucking show, and it deserves it. Yeah. Well written. Well acted. Does a great way of tying all the different films in to this one fucking story. And the characters aren't forced. They're fucking natural. Yeah. It, it, that's what I like. I don't like this, you know, adding diversity for diversity's sake. That's... Chucky's real world. Nothing seems forced. It's it's the town. And talk about waiting for a season fucking two, that nice little recap at the end. And Chucky's sitting in his fucking chair with his fucking robe on and shit. Talk about mm-hmm. all the people we killed and everything else. It's like, fuck, man. So I have two shows. There'll probably be one and two next year. What we do in the shadows and Chucky season two. I want more Chucky. And I did not think I would ever say that. When yeah, because he... You and I are not major, and actually, I don't even think Ziggy is, are not Child's Play fans, like big fans. But, wow. No, like I said, I like the first two Child's Play movies. I, I want three in there as well, but pretty much yeah. anything after that, I have not liked, except for the fucking reboot. Yeah. And that, that one was okay. It was okay. But like after fucking Cult of Chucky, I was like, oh, damn, this really jumped oh. the fucking shark. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, did they set up Cold of Chucky in that season finale where I was all gun ho for it? I was like, "This is fucking cool." <laughs> like, okay, fuck yeah, I'm kind of on board with this now. Film. The plan's yeah. coming, right? Well, Colonel, that was a nice list. Fine list, sir. A Chucky for you. I dare you! I double dare you, motherfucker! Say one more goddamn time. I guarantee we'll get it at least one more time. Oh, at least. No, not, um, nice, nice list, Colonel. I hope I don't disappoint the uh, fan base. Yeah, I think you will. You always do. Yeah. Uh, all right. Stacy Lynn says, I was watching it. Digged it so far. Uh, Carrie says, can't wait to see it. I think they're talking about Cobra Kai. 
This is this is death curse society. Yeah, Cobra Kai. <laughs> no, Cobra Kai is fine. It's fine. Uh, James says you might learn how to make a monster. Uh oh. That's true. Carrie says stuff on the true crime is my Achilles heel. Yeah, I I think if I really started watching some of that, because there's a shit ton out there now, uh, I I get stuck. I would never get anything done. So I try to stay away from a lot of that just to be on the safe side. Ziggy, it looks like you get to wrap us up for the list. We got a uh, list to share there before I. Ah, uh... Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me do those. I okay. forgot. I we had a the spam girl came back, so I had to block her and that. Block her? Would you change? How'd she get through? I didn't. I I I fucking flat out blocked her ass. Yeah, I don't know. She came back. Anybody want to see what did it say? Naked something or other? I ain't clicking that fucking link. I didn't look at it. Unless you want to get a virus on your computer. Don't click it. All I saw were emojis. Yep. Um, so bots. I just... Stay the fuck out of our stream. Yeah. All right. Orlando's top five list. Uh, number five, American Horror Stories. Number four, Day of the Dead. Number three, Midnight Mass. Number two, Creep Show. And number one, Chucky. Yeah. Uh, now, Orlando, I just want to clarify. And well, hold on, let me get S. Michael in here too because he's got it also. Number five, American Horror Stories, Creep Show, Chucky at three, two, What We Do in the Shadows, and number one, Evil. There you go. I like that. Uh, both of you, S. Michael and Orlando, I want to I want to clarify that you are talking about stories, the short one hour. American horror stories that aren't necessarily tied together, not double feature because stories was my, that would be my number six. And it was my number five up until I saw started watching day of the dead. And I was like, this is not bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, I already did that one. There's a new one down here though. Okay, and S. Michael says right, and Orlando says yes, that's correct. All right, yeah, I dug stories. I couldn't, I haven't even seen the second half of Double Feature yet. I just haven't made the time to watch those six episodes. I don't know why. All righty, Ziggy. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> I'm going to move along <clears throat> because uh, we got a couple other segments we got to get to as well. Yeah, but there's TV short. shows. Uh, I do. Well, I have one different one from these two guys, but uh, let's get on with it, man. Number five, it's the third season, and I don't know how they keep it fresh like this, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, Eli Roth and the History of Horror. Okay, you moved that to number five? Yeah, I made that five. Gee, thanks for letting me know. I, what did I tell you it was? I mean, you told me it was uh, three. Did I say three? Oh, well. Mm -hmm. It's five. I caught it. I caught okay. what you were stepping in. Yes. <clears throat> number four. Uh, I'll say but the double feature. Know. American Horror Stories. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's different, man, but this show is important for horror TV. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, we got to keep it going. So, I mean, uh, it, it was a departure this time, but I think uh, it's still it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Number three, the weakest of the uh, series. This season, Creep Show season three, just didn't have that. Like we had, we had two episodes in season two that were, oh my god, it was, everything was forgiven and worth it with those two episodes. Mm -hmm. Didn't get that here, man. But I'm holding hope that they got more stuff coming that's a little bit better. Let's hope. Uh, yeah. Number two, I'm with Crank. Day of the Dead, although it lacks the stink of George A. Romero, his touch, it's still pretty good. It's it's a little more action based than what his movies are, but I, it's not completely ruined. They didn't completely fuck it up like I expected them to. So, but I like Kevin? the characters in this. I like the characters in this, and they are well developed. You know, like, in a way, they're, they're a bit over the top, but I I agree. I like I it. think they're supposed to be. Yes, but the over the top in Day of the Dead was bad acting. Let's face it, in the Romero version. Okay, so I mean. Right. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's all right. It's it's worth your time. Go ahead and check it out. Day of the Dead, baby. Yeah. yeah. And of course, number one, I probably had the lowest expectations of the three of us for this. 
Not a fan of Child's Play. I like the first one, the second one, and much less of the third one. You can fucking keep the rest of them. <laughs> I tuned into this show, didn't want to. I had no desire to see it, and man, I was hooked like a fucking fish. It's This is what you get when you let us a show in a property IP creator do what the fuck he wants without studio restraint. You get Chucky, and it's fucking great. I uh, cannot wait for season two. I I just don't know, man. I, I I guess it can only go down from here. But I mean, wow, what a debut! Man. I, great. I'm a little show. worried about that. Yeah. Uh, I like what one thing you just said about it though is very important. I mean, this is clearly the DCS number one TV show of this year. Clearly, oh, yes. yes, all three of ours, which doesn't happen very often. No. But one thing you just said, given the the creator the freedom to actually do what he wants to do and trust him enough to, that he's doing it well. Now, granted, he's got a hell of a team with him, uh, yeah. writing team especially. Some of the people that are writing on this. Uh, Nick, Nick, ah, fuck, I can't think of his name right now, but the, the creator of Tra Channel Zero, oh, yeah. uh, uh, so good. Clearly, I, I like he's got a vision for where he wants this to go and yes. there's nobody in his fucking ear studio wise going well why don't we try this and go this way yeah. with it but this will be good too and it, yeah. no he's he's doing it how he wants to do it and he's fucking delivering at this point so i don't know man like i i do uh, think it'll probably be a bit of a letdown maybe not the first couple episodes we'll see where they go with it but uh man so far wow spectacular right agreed i but that's important let the creator breathe you know yeah. if you're part of a studio or part of an independent production company let the creator breathe a little bit i understand you have restraints that you want to impose on stuff but man give them a chance you might be shocked good listen you gotta go with the chucky one more time All right. Uh, Orlando wants to throw an honorable mention slasher season four. All right. Fair enough. We'll, we allow it. Uh, James says, yeah, I wasn't sure if I would like Chucky at first, man. We were so, especially Colonel, because Colonel, well, no, I don't think Colonel was too worried about it, because Colonel is just one of those guys that is just like, I ain't going to watch that shit. Yeah. <laughs> He'll just say it. Yeah. Uh, there are a few things that, We've made him watch, and he's like, "Oh God, really?" You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's few and far between anymore. Now he's more on board, but uh, yeah, this we really all cool. were worried yeah. about that. Yeah, even though I do. Uh, oh, go ahead. Nope. Go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. I'll get it after the comments. It's no big deal. All right. All right. Patricia says, "I wasn't a huge fan of the Child's Play movies either. I feel like it got better after Jennifer Tilly came on board, movie wise." I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like the character is still hate most of the storylines and all the movies. The storyline there was bad. I'll save the uh, top five list for after what you got, Colonel. All right. I'm just going to say, that's something Zag said. I kind of have a counter question to what you said. So you said American Horror Story. We got to keep it going. It's too important for horror on television. Five years ago, you might have been right, dude. I don't Now I, I say not out so of much. gas. Out of gas. It's been out of gas for me. Nobody so, cares anymore. There's so much horror on TV now. Was it important? Of course it was. Of course it was. I'm not debating that. Saying is it as important now? Fuck no. It's. I'm I'm looking at it as you would look at <laughs> a uh, a pro golfer, and you know how they do well in a tournament. They get exemptions or automatic entries and qualify. And do, and I think they've earned mm -hmm. a couple of seasons to prove that they're still worthy. At this point, well, that's, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. They've got seasons locked up until I think twenty three. Yeah. So, I mean, they got a contract with Fox right now or FX. So, they're good for a couple more years. We're going to get a couple more seasons of it. But I kind of agree with Colonel. I think, and but those guys can write any ticket they want anywhere they want. Oh, they yeah. could walk in. They could walk in and show the tattoo of a a film pitch on their dick. To some net network executive, and that net executive is, go, oh, 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 is just going to start choking on it and give him a deal. Oh, buddy. So, oh, yeah. what a horrible analogy. 
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. But... You guys were talking about me going ass to mouth earlier on Mike Flanagan, so fuck you. Put this dick in your mouth. Put that dick in your mouth. <laughs> but but I'm, am I wrong? No, no. you're not wrong. No. You're absolutely correct. No, those guys have like, what, 15 series going at the same fucking time right now? It's goddamn ridiculous. Strike they got a first look, hot. Yeah, they got a first look deal at Fox and Netflix. How the fuck does that work? You know, I I don't know, but I think it's time for them to retire American Horror Story, and maybe focus on stories, uh, because that concept has a lot more play. You know, yeah, it doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be ten episodes, but it also doesn't have to be one. As they proved with stories, because the first one and the last one were connected. Right. And you could do two or three episodes to tell a full story. You could do one episode to tell a story. You could do one episode to tell two stories. Well, it's wide open. It's wide open. It does seem the horror landscape for the TV world is uh, vast and going to be delivering for a while. Let's just hope mm -hmm. it continues into the next year. Exactly. Uh, Orlando says American Horror Story is like the creature feature now for those that remember it. Right. Oh, yes. That That's a great analogy right there. All right. Colonel gets us kick off our next list, and that it, it's pretty simple. It's our top three fan films of 2021. Oh, ho, top oh. three fan films. Let me tell you. Huh. Let me tell you. Oh, shit, son. Oh, oh. shit. Oh. All right. Texas Chainsaw Halloween. I don't care. But anyway, <laughs> none of these have to do with, well, Texas Chainsaw anyway. Fan films. Yay. I get to leave this fucking shit because I love fan films. They're fantastic and just so entertaining. And why It's just I how the rotation lands, man. I don't make these decisions. I'm glad you're going first because what... I don't care about these like you guys do, and that's fine. Everybody's different. I just people, these are the ones where I'm like, oh, we gotta fucking watch this. <coughs> he does very few times that I'm like, cool, okay, I'm looking forward to this. That's enough side story bullshit. Let's get this started. Top three fan films coming in at number three. See it over my shoulder. Roseblood. I said, I think Peter did a great job. This first movie directing it, the acting was solid. We just like so we just covered it. Like that twist ending though, fucking just <laughs> ruined a good movie for me. It's, it's just a little bit. It, it, it honestly should probably be my number two, but that fucking twist, not the, not the Savini twist. We know which twist that didn't need to be fucking made. Again, fan films you get certain luxuries and you can play with different properties, but fuck, man. It sucked me right out of the fucking story. So <laughs> Roseblood. Coming at number two, again, I put this almost on par with Roseblood. There's literally only one reason why I got number two, and that's Jason Rising. And it got number two because it didn't tie in any other fucking horror franchises. If Roseblood didn't have Michael Myers in it, it probably would have been my number two, to be honest. Again, not saying it's a bad movie, just Mm. It's a Friday fan film. I just want Friday. Because, let's be honest, in a Friday fan film, I'd much rather have the twist of a headless Pam Voorhees running around than a fucking Michael Myers getting pulled into the Friday 13th universe. That's all. That's all. This one, yeah, Jason Rising is a fan film. Coming in at number one. Boy, was I dreading this one. Boy, was I fucking wrong. And boy, I was not going to spoil it last week when Crank spoiled his. Hands down, it's me, Billy. No fucking argument. You you can't. When you can make someone like myself, who's not a huge fan of Black Christmas at all, love your fucking film and get drawn into that universe and want to see more, you've done a hell of a fucking job. And that's exactly what they did. Beautifully mm -hmm. shot. Beautifully acted. Perfect runtime. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And that's a nice little twist at the end that wasn't absurd. Like a headless Pamela Voorhees running around and an Alice showing up or a Michael Myers. It made sense to the story and for a continuation. It was taken serious. Loved it. 
Yep. Fucking loved it. Hey, Colonel. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, Ziggy, what do you got on uh, your list? For the fan films. Yeah, I mean... Actually, three was a little tough. Uh, you know, there was we saw quite a few. There was a lot of entries that were right there, but when it got down to it, there were three that kind of rose above the rest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be honest, my number two and three, you could probably alternate them either way. Uh, they're both equally entertaining. One's a little bit shorter, uh, but I think I went uh, at number three. I started it, and it's just do it. It's Roseblood. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Just getting close to the cast and the crew and, and, and seeing how they interact and like at the premiere and everything. It was just it was a it was a different experience seeing a movie like this. And uh, just but I dug the story. I don't hate the Michael Myers twist as much as the Colonel does. You know, spoiler if you don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> he he shows up and uh, takes on Jason briefly. But it ties into the story, so it's not just like what the fuck. But I mean uh it you can't like really it, it's a sequel with some of the characters from part seven and you know but then it goes into its own thing but i mean still this guy it's his first fucking movie and his crew and cast were feeling the passion on the whole thing so it's well worthy of a spot on this list man if you haven't seen rose blood please check it out it's a yeah. full-length fucking movie yep and again, same level. I guess it could be one and two and two here because uh, number two, I did the same thing. Jason Rising. Uh, I, I, I was so entertained by this. Yeah, it's a little bit cheesy at times. And you got the headless Pam. She puts her own head back on. And, and I still knock them for this. Make the eyes white when you do stuff like that, man. You can't have pupils in there. It doesn't look good. Never does. Uh, but it does have its share of good gore and a really cool twist. Something I hope is followed up on, which... Last we heard, they were trying to figure something out uh, with some classic characters returning. You know how much I love classic characters in modern pieces. So, yes, Jason Rising, man. It's it's absolutely worth it. Uh, super entertaining for a Friday the 13th fan film. Which leaves us, yes, number one. There's there's no way around it, man. The, this is the, the cream of the crop this year. It's me, Billy. Fucking Black Christmas sequel. This is a fucking... You could call this canon right to the end. I mean, it fits so good. It feels like Black Christmas. I mean, at the fucking... Talk about leaving you wanting more. And that's exactly what they did here. And uh, it's just great. We watched it last week. The more I see this movie now, it's you know, half a dozen times. Because it's not that long. It's only 42 minutes long. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's worth seeing, man. Uh, even if you're not a fan of Black Christmas, like the Colonel... You can't help but appreciate how well they tie together. And the choices they made to show you a little bit more of the killer, fucking fantastic, man. So you're looking for a fan film? I got one for you, and it's called It's Me, Billy. Dave McRae, well done, sir. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. Um, Same fucking list. Exact same fucking list. And mine is a little different, but not much. Um, <laughs> Dave says, wouldn't 13 Fanboy be considered fan film? No, no, it would not, because that is a feature film. It's just an independent film. Does yeah. it feature uh, uh, characters reprising... Uh, or does it, does it feature actors reprising characters from other films? No, it does not. It features actors that we've seen in other films playing themselves, I would consider it more of a meta film than a fan yeah. film. That's just me. Um, this is just a feature that the material, you know what I mean, is what it's about, not the actual... You know, so yeah, it's not a fan film in any way. Uh, Dave says, Jason Rising was actually a really fun film. It was yes. kind of a fun film. Absolutely. And I love, uh, I love Vincent's little... Oh, shit. I wonder if I can load that. Um, I love Vincent's thing, but his appearance in it. Uh, Orlando says his top three, it's me, Billy, Jason Rising, and 13 Fanboy. Uh, he didn't make it number one just because he was in it. <laughs> right, 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 right. 
No, uh, if you're going to count thirteen fanboy in there, for me it would be it would still be probably at least number two, maybe number three. Mm. I don't know. Um, I, I just I'll can't, go ahead and. I can't see it as a fan film, man. It's a it's a feature, and no, it's, it's a feature. Yeah, yeah, and it's an independent. I would absolutely call it an independent, but not a fan film. Yes, it's definitely it's an independent. Um, no, that is kind of a gray area though, because they, well, they don't really they don't really mention the characters per se in it by their name I, of, I or the movies the gray, they were in. I wouldn't even put it in the gray area because they're not working with an already created IP, a well established yeah. IP. This is a brand new IP. They yeah. just haven't have references though. Yeah. References, right? I mean, but they don't ever mention them, you know, by name. It's, it's yeah. It's cool. It's, I mean, like, I'm not mad at you for putting it on your list, man. But I just, no. you know, to me, it's I don't I don't consider it a fan film. It's a it's a not not a very fan film. good, no. very fun independent feature. All right, my list is pretty similar to theirs. I'm gonna rattle right through it. Number three, Jason Rising. I did not like this one quite as much as I like number two, Roseblood. Now, do I like Roseblood because I got to meet and hang out and know? A lot of this cast and crew, a lot more than I do the guys behind Jason Rising. Uh, besides Vincent, yeah, uh, that, that might be a reason. But I enjoyed the majority of Roseblood a lot more than... I didn't necessarily like the Headless Mom, the Headless Pamela. It, it distracted me a little bit. It pulled me out of the movie a little bit. It was different. Number one, uh, there, there could have been... The only thing... I said when this movie came out was I begged Vincent not to release an episode of Never Hike Alone because I did not want to have to, I didn't want to have to put him at number two. And that I'm telling you guys, there's two, there's three, which are uh, like these guys have said, could be interchanged yep. probably. But then you're going to have to get a step ladder to get to number one. It's me, Billy. These, I'm sorry. And Peter, I love you. I love <laughs> you, man. Uh, Jason Rising, Vincent, I know you didn't direct this or, or really, I think you co-wrote it maybe and helped out a lot with it. I love you too, man. But it was like fuck. additional writing for him on that. Yeah, but fuck, It's Me, Billy is, oh. that's, whew, God, I, when it comes to fan films, that I may put that one even above Never Hike Alone. In it's, in an all time kind of list, it's it's, a, it's, it's on a, a coin flip. flip. Yeah, it's a coin flip, man. It's a coin flip. It's on a level of its own, man. When it comes to its look and design, quality, sound design, all of it considered. All of it considered. They right to learn. It's me, Billy. All right, they're they're the same. I know it's they be on the screen, but they're the same. But again, because like, I'm not a fan of Black Christmas, but I'm a huge Friday fan. Never Hike Alone is always going to get the gonna win by a fucking nose every fucking time but they would be anything bad about it's me billy because like it's like god damn so yeah. good i agree i agree um i went ahead and loaded this we were gonna save it for the next time vincent's on here but <laughs> yeah, let's show it uh here's a little clip from jason rising ladies and gentlemen cut the power what the fuck is that Get back and close the door. Close the door. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? No, if you give her the white Love eyes it. like she had in part three. I think that Pamela looks pretty fucking cool. I hate it that her eyes were alive. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But that was cool. All right. <laughs> that is, I love that. I can't, I can't wait for uh, Vincent to actually see that. I sent it to uh, Drew, and he just he, he his message back was, I'm sure he was still laughing because it was like half misspelled. <laughs> like, <laughs> LOL, LOL, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Um, all right. Again, a quick 
rundown of conventions that we went to this year. Yeah. Um, let's get into that. So, Ziggy, you start this one. Uh, we did get to a few cons. Well, some of us got to a few cons. You know, some of us had to work a lot more and couldn't get to a lot of them. But it's cool. Uh, my, I got to three. That you know, I three was the number we needed to hit for this one. So I, I got three for sure. Uh, number three was the Roseblood World Premiere, where we got to interact with the cast and crew, and uh, we did live streaming and interviews mm -hmm. with everybody right down the fucking line from top to bottom, from Peter Anthony director to his stars that returned from part seven, to the, the cast that helped get it done, to the fucking makeup effects guys. We got mm -hmm. it all, and uh, it, it was a great time. I highly recommend going to a hyped-up premiere like that if you have the means. No, I highly recommend if you're going to do a fan film, yes. do a fucking premiere like this. That's oh, yeah. how you fucking do it, because that, man, that was that was so fun. It was a big party, man. It, it was just really good, uh, and... I, I really can't say enough about it. I mean, uh, just it, it really, you know, just seeing how everyone reacting to the screen and when they showed up on the screen, it was just fucking cool, man. And yeah. uh, the way they had it laid out and spread out and everything and the props and it's, it was all there, man. And uh, it was just a good time. Number two on the con list, uh, me and Crank went to his home state in Oklahoma and we fucked the whole place up at the Oklahoma Horror Con. It was a fucking blast. And this year coming up, 2022, we are dragging the colonel down there with us. So I expect even more hijinks and hilarity to happen. But Oklahoma is okay in my fucking book, man. Those people were fucking cool down there. And uh, based on what I'm looking at, what's coming together, I'm super excited. And my brain is already twisting on what kind of shenanigans we can pull uh, to make this shit funny and uh, entertaining. I want to talk about all of our. I want to talk about all of our ideas that we have for OKC Horicon this year, but I can't. Not yet. <laughs> Number one, we all convened in the great state of Ohio and finally got to get to Whorehound Cincinnati. After two years of delays, we got it done. We all showed up and we fucking leveled the place, and it was glorious. And uh, it was just a blast, man. I had a. That was the best time by far for the cons. Hanging out with S. Michael and, and some of the other fans we got to meet, you know, uh, the big card game we had where Crank sucked out on my crushing hand on the river, but that's cool. It was a, a great experience, and I cannot wait to get back to Cincinnati and Indianapolis whenever they start that shit again and wherever else in the States we got to go to. The cons with the boys, I'm all about it, man. Fuck yeah. I, still need to make, I still need to make my trophy for that, too, that I need to keep for a year and then... Whoever wins the next the next one in uh, Cincinnati and in in September it's an annual event. I mean, we'll right. probably do one in March too, but the September one's the big one. <laughs> we have to pass the trophy off. Good God! All right, good list, sir. Colonel or no? I go next. Uh, man, again, I'm pretty close to Ziggy, but not quite exact. Uh, the Roseblood Convention, that's the way to fucking do it, gang. If you've got, even if you've got an independent film and you're pushing it, invite your Indiegogo people, your supporters on there, your contributors there. You know, do it. It's so fun. And make it a big deal. Yeah. You know, you may, not, you may not be able to sell autographs like they were between Laura Park Lincoln and, and the others. And even some of the lesser stars were selling autographs. I didn't pay for mine. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. The big star didn't have to pay for his, you know, but um, it, it was a cool, it was a cool event. And I wish more places did things like that. Number two for me, though, slightly different than uh, Ziggy, Horror Hound. I dug the shit. I always love going to Horror Hound. It's always a good time. I, I was introduced to Skyline Chili, which <laughs> I'm fucking addicted to now. Um, I've been telling you guys for fucking years. I still got three cans of it left that I bought on my way back uh, from uh, Connecticut. Uh, but number one for me, man, just the fact that we are welcomed so heavily, yeah. uh, open arms uh, at OKC Horicon. Uh, Rod and the crew, uh, Nadine, uh, the hot Sabrina down there, all of them, uh, just such a, a lovely group of people. Uh, 
We don't got some good people number down one fan. Don't forget your number one fan. No, we got we got Al. Yeah, no, you're his number one fan, I think, yeah. because he brought you he brought you some Howie. Uh, but no, we got all kinds of people down there that are great. And it, it's just a fun time. And I think some of the things that we have in store for this year are going to fucking completely blow your goddamn socks off. And I hope they do. And I hope that we're able to pull all of this off because it's going to be a lot of a hard work over the next eight months to get it done. We're raising but the that's my top bar, three. man. Raising the fucking bar. That's what we, we, we have to raise. We have to raise the bar every year, or what the fuck are we doing? We're just going to be a one-trick pony that, oh, rank these movies by the emoji. No, <laughs> we're not doing that. All right, Colonel, you only went to one convention this year. Yeah, no, my list is fucking dude. But no, of course. I mean, four round fucking Cincinnati. I, again, uh, COVID hit certain industries hard. Mine is one of them. We're don't have anybody to fucking work, but we got a shit ton more orders because apparently people are staying home, but they're washing their fucking hair. So I can only get to one. And uh, the forecast says I'm probably going to be able to get to two next year at best. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was fucking awesome. It was, it's always great when we're all together. C phase joined us. It was nice having like a bachelor pad, I guess you say, or home base for a weekend. Dude, that was we a cool kept place. We were clean. We kept it fucking nice. Yeah. Yep. We got a five star yeah. review as guests. Oh, oh yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that, that the review was just like come back anytime, guys. Yeah, <laughs> which would be awesome. But my my have a new home base for fucking March and September. We'll see how things go. <laughs> Don't jinx it. No, I'm not looking for We'll see. But uh, dude, and then like I said, meeting S. Michael and his daughter, and uh, meeting Tiny Tyrone came out to see us. It, it was yep. nice mm-hmm. to actually see fans. You know, I don't those you guys fans. We're we're a society, so I don't call you fans. Right. But it was nice to actually get together, have dinner. Never mind the fact neither one of none of us can change a fucking tire, save our fucking lives. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I just Well it doesn't help I park on a fucking slope and yeah. there. That yeah. and the fact that Ziggy was so fucking high. That's true. It wasn't my fault. He was the one down there. I didn't put the jack under there. Yeah, I, all I did was take the lugs off, man. But and, and, but one thing I really liked about this this uh, convention that we usually don't get, man, it, when life gives you lemons, you make fucking lemonade. Uh oh. And uh, did so something just get of, loaded? I loaded something up before we went live, so this is for you, you know, all twelve of you still here. Enjoy. Like I said, I thought it was gonna be funny, but. Life ain't gives you lemons. You make lemonade, and I think it turned out a hell of a lot better. So thank you, Deborah, for joining us in our fun and games. I think it turned out way better than as a silent film. We lost the fucking audio. It's gone. Uh, who who lost the fucking audio? I'm not trying to say names. <laughs> I will. Listen. Ziggy lost the fucking audio. There's. It's just. See the technology back in the '90s for this particular device. <laughs> you had to push it twice to advance a channel. To, it, to give it another file, I did not do that. See, I hadn't used it in a decade, so when I laid it down, I recorded three bits on here. I got the last one only, and the other two were overwritten. So that's what happened there, and that's why it was a silent film. Although I, I still think it should have been a, a Three Stooges slap added to it, would have yeah, brought it out. But I, I, I get your silent film move and desire, and I accept it's fine. It was fine. It worked. You, you made lemons out of or lemonade out of lemons, Colonel. Right. I think it's great. I think it's great. Uh, 
God, I wish we could make the other one, but I, without the audio, I don't think it's going to. Oh, me. give me a minute. Give me time. I haven't messed. I haven't had a chance to mess with that one. I may have found some audio that might be able to be worked with. Somebody put a phone down for that one, but this one, because we did yeah, that, that fucking Buffalo Bill one last. That's what I have. Right. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I fucked up. I'm sorry. You fucked up. Uh, S. Michael says, I put It's Me, Billy, in my regular top 10, but it's for sure the number one fan film. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Carrie says, Love discovering Death Curse Society. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Uh, Orlando says, DCS needs to come to Flashback Weekend Chicago Horror Con. When, when is that? Yeah. And uh, while you're getting that information for us, Dave says, how about a top three weird interviews? Ari would easily win the Cringe Award. God, that was such a hard interview, man. And Billy oh, Zane would win the Christ. Dick Award. Billy Zane, he already did. He won yeah. the Suck a Dick Award. Um, we are going to be branching out and going to other conventions along the way. We've got to, yes. you know, we got to focus on our home base ones, of course, because they're close to home. But... Uh, Chicago's not that far of a drive for me. I'd be game for that. And it's not far for Ziggy either. Four Maybe hours. Colonel. Four and a half. Yeah, Colonel can what? meet Ziggy in uh, in Detroit and then join yeah, up. Yeah, how far out of the way that is for me? I can get to Chicago in like six hours. Okay, well then fuck, never mind. Excuse the fuck yeah, out of me. He does go kind of angle right up, you know. Yeah. All right, we got one more thing uh, that we wanted to, or Zigzag wanted to mention, a couple of short films that he found over the year, and uh, he wanted to I, bring these up. I fell down a rabbit hole just looking up, you know, I was looking up 2021 films and everything, and I was like, yeah, I've seen this, and I, I, I one of these came up. I was like, it's fucking eight minutes long. What the fuck is this? I started watching, and again, I, I just, it ended up being four hours later, and I watched about 30 fucking shorts. I, it was a lot of them suck, but I did come up with three I think were pretty cool and worthy of a uh, view. And they're all pretty short. They're all like under 10 minutes. So uh, I, I'm going to go in no particular order. I think, did you do uh, the the uh, the one I suggested? I took that one. I took that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking the one I, I, I these aren't in any order. You, you'll find them all. It's fine. Uh, L-I-C is the order I've got them in. L-I-C. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so uh, yeah, this one first one that popped up was called The Lake, and uh, basically a guy returns with his girlfriend to this lake, and you find out that you know they send you a little bit thing at the beginning in text that this they made these man-made lakes, and no lake has more deaths in it than this one particular body of water. And this, of course, this guy brings his girl to propose, and shit goes from there. But it's not a long movie, uh, and it was it's got some super creepy moments in it. The other one was called Ignore It. Another short one. Uh, but th the concept was great. It just, you got a kid playing his Game Boy up in his room. Dad comes in and goes, Hey, son, it's dinner time, but I just wanted to let you know she's here again. So you know what to do. Just ignore her. And then they all walk off and go down the stairs. So you're like, well, What the fuck? Please well, watch <laughs> that one. It's decent, man. You'll dig it. Uh, and it's only like six or seven minutes. Not long at all. These are like I said, yeah. you got to get a couple of little bit of horror in your day. You need just 10, five, 10 minutes. These are your films. Uh, the last one I came up with has that. What was that phenomenon with the, the thing with the face? It's kind of smiley and has the eyes. It's Momo. Momo. Yes. So, so this is kind of a take on the Momo character. It's called cleanup and it's about a girl. She's she's one of these crime scenes. She cleans up the where the bodies were, where the blood stains. She's got to you know get it all fresh. You know, again, a, a job where most people you know you got to be a special kind of hard ass to be able to ignore all that fucking trauma and bring it back with you and shit. But she goes in to clean it up. She's got her boyfriend on the camera, and it, something happened in a in one of the rooms. And she's like, "Oh yeah, you need to run outside and go get this for me." And then shit happens. So. Check these out. They're short films. Uh, we've added them to our database on our webpage at deathcursesociety.com mm -hmm. if you want to take the shortcut there. And uh, there's yep. a few more. I, I will, uh, I'm will. i putting the link to our short film database in the comments right now, actually. so I found another oh. one, too, that was a couple years older. It's, uh, it's called Here's Jimmy. You know, it's just an honorable Meet Jimmy. 
Meet Jimmy. Meet Jimmy. Meet Jimmy. Yeah, meet Jimmy. And uh, just it stood out to me because the sound design was so fucking good because it's in earbuds, like it's meant to be in earbuds. You know what this person's going through. So meet Jimmy. Check that out too. It's a little older, a couple years older, but well worth it. And again, only 10, 11 minutes. So you can bang all four of these out in just fuck under an hour. It'd be fine. Right. But yeah, the shorts are live and well, man. Support. Yeah, and we got a, art. We got a whole plethora of them on there. I think we got like sixty-five or so on our website that you can link to and watch. Uh, Ziggy recommended that ignore it uh, should be our new featured short horror film. So it's right there at the top when you go to that page. Such a cool concept. Just so cool. Right. Uh, James has been watching a lot of shorts as well. He says the door was decent. And he says teaching Jake about the camcorder January 97 was an okay short as well. So uh, we'll look we'll up look both those. of those, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was shocked that once I started really digging into the shorts, <laughs> there's pages and pages and pages of new shorts, probably hundreds oh, yeah. out daily. Who the fuck knows? It's well, a there's of- a YouTube, there's a YouTube channel called alter that does a lot of sci-fi and horror. Mm-hmm. And that's, where a bunch of them go, but they've got a good following. Cold searches, man. This is, I found all these just looking around, you know, digging. Here's the bad news, gentlemen. Orlando says August 5th through the 7th of 2022 is the next convention in Chicago. We're going to be uh, at the same weekend as Oklahoma, baby. Yeah. We'll be in Oklahoma, unfortunately that weekend, Orlando, but maybe we can make another one at some point. Um, and uh, we'll tr- we'll try to get up there. You know, we just we've got a we've got a good connection uh, and a good relationship with the guys that do the Oklahoma City Horror Con, and we think we can help them, and they can yeah. help us. And we've got some- God damn it, I want to tell you guys so bad because I know you're all friends, but we've, we've got have- some things in the works. We do have things in the works, but uh, Oklahoma people give us access to everything and everybody, which is the a, a huge difference. We don't have to beg for an interview. We don't have to none of that shit. I mean, it's it's so much right. easier to bring you guys strong content. So that's that's right. why it's a no brainer to go there for us. Well, and we can jump in the coffin if we need to, <laughs> you know, shit like that. Yeah, right. You know, there's no one you. saying, "Uh, hey, you can't you can't do that here." And I guarantee you're not getting slapped. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. We're, we're uh, big screen queens. Yeah. Dave says, is the lake on there to watch? It is. It is uh, in in the L's. Uh, Yeah, just go alphabetically when you get when you run out of films on there, hit view more or see more or something like that. And it'll throw another 30 up or whatever. Try to avoid the thumbnail they put with it, too, because that kind of fucking spoils the whole thing, in my opinion. But it's still worth it, you know, to see. I didn't even look at it, to be honest with you. Uh, Orlando does say Days of the Dead is in May. Not a good I've already told the people I work for that I'm going to be gone a lot this next year. So, May is yeah, a possibility. I'm kind of in the midst of a change, too. So, I, I don't know. I, you know, all I can say is 50 50 at this point on that. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I had something to throw at you guys and the remaining uh, watching audience, but. The fact that you brought up shorts and we've been talking about trying to expand the more independent and, and filmmakers. <clears throat> Would you guys like to do another show? It doesn't have to be once a week, but maybe once a month where we just sit down and watch a handful of shorts and talk about them afterwards and, you know, discuss them with the audience. But we all just kind of watch a few together. Would that be something you'd be interested in, Colonel? Well, time permitting, like I said, unfortunately, I do work. So, I, I understand. Yeah, I, would, I don't I'd think be it's a great, a great idea, but yeah, I'd be. This also do doesn't have to be two and a half hours every. Right. I mean, we can we can cut this one down to like an hour and a half if we need to. Do it in the middle Shit, of the week. Still, I think two and a half hours. I should tell you, two hours, son. <laughs> yeah. Except I knew last week was gonna be a long day to talk. Right. 
Well, think think about it. And guys, if you're still watching, comment. Do you think that's a decent idea? Let us know. Ziggy, what about you? Oh yeah, I, I think it. Yeah, that'd be. I'd like that a lot because I I enjoy watching because you really never know what you're going to get with these things. And and right. there was a lot of disappointment. Don't get me wrong, but that could lead to some very funny, fun, funny, funny okay. interactions between us and our reactions on some of these things. So. Ah. Ah. It was just one of those things I thought of when you sent these when we were talking about the shorts the other day. Yeah, I was like that. That could be kind of fun, and I bet we could get away with it. Maybe invite one of the filmmakers in from time to time. Yeah, because um, yeah. the guy that did the lake has a bunch. I think it was the lake has a bunch of different shorts out there. Yeah. Um, so, um, I guess that's going to wrap it up. Anything wow. else to add, gentlemen? What a show. 20 what, what a year. What a year. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next week, like I mentioned, we're going to be covering the most anticipated films of 2022. We're getting a jump start on the year. We're going to talk about, of course, Scream. Uh, there's several others that are coming out. Terrifier Halloween 2, hopefully. And, yeah. Halloween hits. Yeah, there's a lot. We're going to talk about that, and uh, we may throw a couple other few surprises in. You never know. So, oh, Ziggy, what do you got to say for the uh, for the uh, closer? Uh, I'm just, you know, I don't have the words to express my gratitude for everyone that bothers to show up here and and listen to us ramble on every single week, man. I mean, but God damn, man. I mean, it, it, just to be able to do this. And share this, you know, I, I felt like I had 40 years of, of horror knowledge. It's just like, it's just for me. It's always been just for me. Nobody gives a fuck. And then having this outlet to do this, I mean, there's nothing more satisfying than getting out here and talking like this. So, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And uh, I look forward to raising the bar in 2022. So much fun stuff coming next year. <laughs> Colonel, yeah. send them out. Uh, yeah, with Zag, uh, it still blows my mind that people actually do tune in to watch us just <laughs> talk about fucking horror. I mean, uh, kind of like Thomas Savini said when we were promos, but why? Like, <laughs> but why? <laughs> like, why are you watching us? I don't, I don't get it. And just how much we've grown so much in a year. Holy shit. It's uh, definitely humbling, uh, but also, you know, kind of makes me want to strive to do better. And I think that's what we're going to do in 20. 2022 uh, looking forward to it and just yeah thanks for everybody joining us it still blows my fucking mind uh, I mean oh I did my first fucking autograph the past year <laughs> what the fuck like that yeah that right weird fucking yeah weird. It, it it it's strange like when people were coming up to Ziggy and I in Oklahoma City they were just like hey can we get a picture and I was like yeah give me your camera I'll take your picture they're like no we want a picture with you we're like Oh, with us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's weird, man. It's weird. It's so, well, well, we'll guess one more time for 2021. Hopefully, I stop saying this, but fuck, it doesn't look like it anytime soon. Not don't soon. get sick. Wash your dick. And don't smell like a scoop of Steve. Use Summer's Eve. Yep, that's right. Don't get sick, folks. Thanks one last time to our final girls and guys, Corey, Chris, Lorena, Christy, Luke, S. Michael, Patricia, Tanya, and Tyrone. And, of course, to our crazy Ralphs, Angelo, Peter, and Raymond. Angelo, I need to reach out to you, by the way, soon. Mm -hmm. I finally have a, an idea I want to get painted. And uh, our camp counselors also, Stacy, Lynn, Orlando, Kiara, and Dave. Thank you, guys, all very much. Hey, listen, uh, Dave here has a request for us to sign off with tonight. Please close out the show with Evil Dies Tonight. So please, boys, weapon up, and let's do this right for the last time this year. Evil, evil, dies, evil dies, dies tonight. tonight. Evil, evil dies, dies tonight. tonight. Evil, evil dies, dies tonight. tonight. We Fuck will see you in 22, baby. DCS out. Woo! Woo! I'm nowhere I'm nowhere near the ending. There it is. Woo!